to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. <laughs> It means something. It means something. And they got away. Yeah. You know, that's my take on it. What, what's yours? Protonic Reversal! That's like a science thing, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. It is a science thing, it is a science place, it's a scientific fact that we are all up in your face. Eight years now, this is Protonic Reversal, and I'm your host, Kona Neutron. Tonight is the eight year anniversary of Protonic Reversal. That's right, eight years ago, I walked into a studio, turned the mic on, started talking, and hope for the best. And here we are. So I wanted to celebrate this momentous occasion episode 291 of this very long-running one-on-one interview show with something really special. Special enough to break format completely for a crossover with Movie Night Extravaganza, aka the best movie show on the internet, where I'm lucky enough to serve as a co-host. And what movie? Why, one of my favorite comedies of all time. This is Spinal Tap, featuring a murderer's row of some of my favorite protonic guests, Jerry Casali of the legendary Devo, Brian Teasley, Man or Astro Man, Chris Murphy of the Mighty Sloan. Something fun, something different, something kind of cool. And if you didn't know any of those things, and you're just here for the guests and are very confused, well, just wait, because it's a fine line between clever and stupid. So without further ado, let's cross the streams. <laughs> Forrest, <laughs> take it away. All right, what's going on? Welcome to episode 81 of Movie Night Extravaganza. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, we have a, we have a whole slate of guests, uh, to talk about Spinal Tap tonight. Um, I don't know. I don't know who wants to do the, the intros. I really hate doing that part. So I feel like since it's, you, have any trouble? you know, just Conan let everybody Neutron. wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think at this point, everyone probably knows who I am. So we can, we can skip that piece of it and, and, and get to the Yeah. Well, part. all right. Well, I'm also joined by J Andrew world, uh, illustrator, artist, a uh, magnificent specimen of a of a man, hunk of a man, really. Um, <laughs> both sexy and sexist. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that explains my No Girls Allowed picture that I finished today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I uh, appreciate you dressing up for the occasion, Andy. Yeah, I, I, I know it was a special day for Conan, so I thought um, I'd sit on uh, my suit jacket to have a good line. Exactly, as we established from broadcast news. That was yes. It. So watch for the sweating and exactly. <laughs> All right. Also joined by Christina Oaks. I'm Christina on Twitch. Uh, good friend, fourth mic. 
tonight we have like you know nine nine different mics going on we're passing the mics around <laughs> yeah it's like the duchy I, I was i was gonna say apparently in celebration of the bc boys uh check your head being uh, 30 years old <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that kills at the record store anyway yeah, good, to see you. good to see you i know you're, yeah. you're you're following this amber heard uh johnny depp thing so much that uh, you know, you're, you're basically the sole source of truth as far as I'm concerned. So. Justice for Johnny Depp. Let's go. I I watched that uh, <laughs> clip today where they were talking about how like he did a bunch of ecstasy or something over three days and and uh, allegedly beat her up or something. And yeah, ecstasy will do that to you. I mean, it sounds like meth more than anything, but <laughs> well, you, you know, know, when you confuse the two, that happens. Yeah, yeah, well, Destiny did that that one time uh, during a debate. <laughs> um, all right. Also joined by <laughs> Erica Strout, Georgia-based filmmaker, uh, you know, musician, plays with Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. You know. Yeah, you know. Hi. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on this one. This is a special movie and a special episode. I'm happy to be here. I'm stoked to have you. It's uh, this is this is this is going to be great. I'm I'm. It's really funny that all the people that I'm so excited to talk to, none of them uh, are on the screen right now. But all the other people that are in here, I'm also very. You're not excited to. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, it, there's just so much. There's so much to talk about and so much to talk to. Uh, so I think uh, for us, we were talking about maybe like playing the trailer and then bringing on Jerry. Yeah, right? let's do it. Awesome. So I know you like to play the trailer beforehand. That's a thing that this show, Movie Night Extravaganza, Protonic people that should be paying attention to this show and don't uh should subscribe and like and do all the things that you do on the internet uh thank you <laughs> 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 clearly that's why this has no crossover before this <laughs> through two decades 17 classic albums countless unforgettable concert triumphs they changed the face of british rock music forever and the best part is they're back. Final tap, get out there, you're on. Now, they're on the verge of the greatest comeback of all time. Rock and roll. No sleep, bud. This is their moment. Go right straight through this door here, down the hall. Yeah. Turn right. Their time has come. Rock and roll. Any minute now. Any second. Hello, stage. I think we're lost. A little job there. About 30 feet. Job to the left. Get ready. Get set. Heavy metal is deep. He gets up out of it. My name is Marty DeBerge. I'm a filmmaker. One man dares to probe the hidden secrets. I was just pointing at it. I well, don't point. Even. You don't even point. No, it can't be played. Never. I mean, can I look at it? Up. One man dares to hear the shocking answers. It's tragic, really. He exploded on stage. To questions like, is the world really ready for spinal tap? You put a greased, naked woman yes. on all fours yes. with a dog collar with around dog her collar. neck and a leash and a leash and pushing a black glove in her face to sniff it you don't find that offensive you, you don't know. find that sexist That's what you should Listen have seen the cover they wanted to do after years of vicious gossip the official explanation was he choked on vomit well i can't prove whose vomit it was years of ugly rumors it's a passion thing. This is a fact. And you are Spinal Tarp? Oh, what's going on here? Hi. Now, the vicious, ugly truth can be told. Well, I'm sure I'd feel much worse if I weren't under such heavy sedation. <laughs> Tap into America! From the place where eardrums go to die, Come the living legends of rock and roll lunacy. This is Spinal Tap. You know, it's like Hemingway said, you know, remember them as they were and write them off. Uh, 
I'd say that's a pretty good preview. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Certainly better wrong. than the edge. <laughs> better, than, better than the edge. Let's see. Uh, how we went. That's not what I was trying to do here. Uh, and hold on. Now we'd like to introduce, of course, I'll figure this out. How do you solo someone that isn't me? Is it just because of my name's on this show that it has to be me? Oh, there you do this. Okay, there we go. Uh, Jerry Casali of the Mighty Devo. Thank you so Woo. much for joining us, sir. Uh, can you hear us? Everything okay? We, everything good over in uh, Devo Landio? I can hear you. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I <laughs> love having you on this, and not the least of which is because Devo. Had a real life Spinal Tap moment, you know, where they're trying to to find the stage and it just constantly the, the bit it just keeps going and going. That actually happened to you guys, right? More than one, yeah. <laughs> and, and and like the way they play it for oh, yeah. Spinal Tap is Devo. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's, there's more than just that, right? They're exactly the same. <laughs> the sound is the same too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to have all right. Let's see. This maybe I don't know. There we go. Is that better? I don't know. I'm trying to. Try this to one's usually the one I I go with. But yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to see that. <laughs> well, it's, it's 17. It's Hollywood Squares over here. I want to have Jerry. <laughs> what I want to do. So. We need three more people we, then. I know. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we laugh because it's sad. Well, yeah. <laughs> one of the things I like so much about this film is that it's it shows the extreme dark comedy of being in a band, but then also shows. The kind of the, the great parts as well but it's all kind of all right there and, and all like laid out so when this came out were you familiar with uh with this when it came out obviously a rob reiner film's like a big deal right if you guys were pretty Probably active yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that just kind of, i mean we need to what uh, who was the one that was uh not martin mall was martin mall on that i can't remember anyway martin uh, Bergie. that's what i was thinking of thank you uh so would you agree, Jerry, that it's kind of like just as much documentary as mockumentary in certain ways, as far as like the interpersonal relationships and things along those lines between the members of Spinal Tap? Uh-oh. Is it me? I don't Are know. You? Maybe moving all these uh, panels I can around. Hear you. So you froze them. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Jerry? Our can connection. Oh, okay. I know that. Uh... And, and oh, no. you may have been asking. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. I think I, you're. I you're... see. I saw. Yeah. I. Well, see, this is Spinal Tap. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said I saw five black screens. And now you're. Now you're back. Okay, great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, this is a very spinal tap moment, right? Yeah, that, that, you're, you're very, it's very true. The weird, the weird thing about StreamYard is uh, you see everybody else's black screens when it's you that's going out or when, when it's you that's frozen. So it seems like everyone else is like the issue, and then you realize it's you. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, Jerry, are we, are we black screens or can you? Can, can you talk about Spinal Tap with us? Because that's sort of the conceit of this bit. So, <laughs> oh no, oh, no. <laughs> All right. lovely. Um, okay, <laughs> we were punctual. Oh, you know, punctual is important with uh, with a rock band for certain fans. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, punctuality, right? I love the scene where they're trying to get to the stage. And they keep getting turned around. They're going this way. They're going that way. And they're going the other way. And they're going this way. And it goes on for seemingly for forever. And they're like trying to stay pumped up about getting on stage to play and, and everything. And it's just, it, it's, 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 it, it goes on for like almost like a Lynchian amount of like torturous. <laughs> yes. And, I, and, and, and I'm for it. Am I the, am I the only one there? I actually have no. a recurring nightmare of, of getting stuck backstage <laughs> trying to get on stage. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, sometimes it's just like, that's the entire dream. Uh, sometimes weird. I might get lucky and find outside and then I can't get back inside because we're locked out at that point. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, you guys remember, do some shadow work on that one. Do you guys remember when um, 
when I think it was Ben Carson uh, at a, at one of like the Democrat or Republican debates. I mean, uh, got stuck backstage. Him and him Trump. And Trump. Yeah, him and Trump got stuck backstage and went the wrong direction or something like that. And everybody else was on stage waiting for them. And they were kind of just backstage facing the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which, which is pretty great. Um, oh, that's amazing. Oh, I think it's on. How do you feel about, the, uh, about that? About the uh, backstage scene? Have you been in that situation? Am I on? You are on. Yeah. Hey, how do you do? Um, uh, what was the question? Sorry, I was looking at my notes. Sorry. What, no, that's fine. You're 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 being a mensch here. Uh, I, I can throw in Brian as well because this is apparently just chaos. I don't know, but yeah, uh, <laughs> we're talking about when they're trying to get to the stage. They're trying to get to the stage. Oh yeah, well that's uh, that's one of the quotes that uh, you know. As so my the reason I'm here, I play in a in a music group called Sloan. And uh, and I don't know if I need to explain who I am, but anyway, uh, yeah. So being in a band, I've been in a band for thirty years. By the way, my first year, my first tour was about thirty years ago, exactly. And and uh, check your head was just oh, that's all we played on the first tour. That's how old we are. But um, yeah, every time you're looking around backstage, you uh, you say hello, Cleveland, and all that whole thing. There are a whole bunch of uh, ways that uh, this movie is is terrifying for for career bands is it reads as a sort of playbook of, of what not to do. I almost think it, it kind of took the fun out of rock and roll for people. Well, for dummies, like for like, you know, it kind of, you know, for the, I think people like Nirvana or like these people who are kind of my bands who are my age, they would have seen this movie and, and just thought, uh, just, we have to do the opposite of these morons. And I think that it sort of created a more sort of self-aware rocker, um, unlike these kind of guys, but you know, these, the sort of hair metal and all that kind of stuff of the eight, this is 82. There were still all kinds of uh, bands that were not very self-aware after this, that continued to be, uh, uh, dummies. I, I, sorry, I don't know what there I'm still are. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's still plenty. But, but, but I feel like, I feel like all that, you know, all those big grunge bands of the nineties, all those nineties bands saw, had seen Spinal Tap clearly and were sort of not behaving like morons anymore. And I think they were less sexist and less stupid and you know that kind of i think those kind you're of you're an things. optimist well i i think i think <laughs> i think there were i think there were a lot of cool bands uh you know well before this and after but uh anyway um uh, do you did you i you sort of asked me a question i don't know what my i was going to start with a little thesis about things but uh sorry carry on i'll just be a panelist here yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the idea was we were just going to break it up and have everybody individually be on, but uh, that obviously is <laughs> it's flown up at the window with the script and flames. So I was just I was just saying, have me on if if there was some technical problems. But now, kick me off and have uh, have uh, Jerry on again, and and I'll I'll come back. Okay, sounds good. Chris Chris Murphy, we'll we'll be talking a little later in the show. Thank you so much for for jumping out the last at the last. Right second. on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Give him the okay. applause sound effect. I know. I <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. Yay! I feel like I feel like though the uh, like the heavy the heavy metal scene like that that era. Um, there's something like incredibly delusional about some of it, right? Like it's almost like where like the like the live shows. I mean, like it's something. It's almost like uh, pro wrestling meets like music. You know what I mean? Like the over the top cod pieces that people literally had on, like that they made fun, that they make fun of in this movie, like. Um, kind of these characters that they're playing, right? Like they're no longer musicians. They're almost like a character on stage. And we talked about this when we uh, talked about Sid and Nancy, like it almost doesn't matter um, at some point, like that they're musicians as much as they're just like characters almost. And I, I feel like after this, this Trumps. time period that started to kind of, I mean, you, you still see it sometimes, but like, um, I mean, now, especially with like, everybody's kind of a brand, I guess, but like, you know, I, I think that, it's almost like it wasn't really about the music. It's more about, you know, the lifestyle and uh, kind of who you are and these like really outrageous uh, stunts you get into, like the fucking Stonehenge thing, which is really funny. But like, you know, it, it speaks to something true. Um, I think it probably about... also depends on the le like the level there you're at as a musician. Like, I think mm -hmm. at that time, like the bigger you got, maybe the more fanfare was expected of the show that you were putting on. That's not yeah. true well, that's anymore. A, that's, a good, that's a good pivot to <laughs> Jerry, who uh, Jerry, uh, well, welcome, welcome back, by the way. 
Um, <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. Yes, there was much Yay. rejoicing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so why don't why why don't you give us a uh, uh, an insider's view of you know what that was like when Devo first started operating? Right, that stuff was like, ubiquitous. Like well, Spinal that. Tap is Devo, and uh, I, I tend to think this is a little more timeless and universal than some of the other panelists here. I, maybe people think they're <laughs> self-aware. They they think they're not as delusional, but there's just a new kind of delusion and self-consciousness, not self-awareness. But uh, all I can say is the scene that you liked in Cleveland happened to us verbatim. We were misdirected on purpose by the union crew who hates all the bands they work for that come through there. And they, on purpose, gave us the wrong directions under the stage. We had a theatrical show. We were supposed to show up on treadmills when the lights hit. The treadmills are going. We're trapped under the stage in a dead end uh, on purpose because they sabotaged us. And we hear the cue. We hear the sequencer line and the treadmill cue. And we're under the stage. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> Yeah, under the stage instead of on the stage, which is yeah. Uh, the lights hit the empty treadmills. <laughs> right. Well, I'm reminded of the um, and the crowd goes. Right. <laughs> I'm reminded of the uh, they, they look for all the world like vaginas, but sort of space eggs that Spinal Taps in, and um, of course uh, Derek Smalls gets stuck in one of them and can't get yeah. out. Yeah. Malfunctioning <laughs> props. Yeah, malfunctioning props. That's a good one. I like basically the they, they, just took a hammer to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. The crew's like, oh, all right. Torch. <laughs> they finally get it open. It's just at the end of the song and he has to go back in it. And then it's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. They definitely loaded the script with every possible joke that rings true still today. They put them all in Spinal Tap. That's why it's as funny now as it was then. The way Strangelove, Dr. Strangelove, is still as funny as it was. There isn't really, I don't think there really was a script for uh, for Spinal Tap. It, like, they kind of improv a lot of it, which is kind yeah. of, I mean, obviously they're making all these references to things that actually did happen and like, you know, like the drummer bits or whatever. But it, it's kind of interesting how much of it seems to have actually been like kind of off the cuff. I mean, you know, knowing the information, like doing research and knowing the information about mm -hmm. uh, stuff that happened to different bands, but like then kind of That's right. like, yeah. just kind of spitballing it. Yeah. But if you look at the at the careers like of those actors since then too, like I mean they're all like improv masters. Like that's that's definitely yeah. a big strength of theirs. It's it's one of the like, secrets, not so much of a secret, but it's one of the reasons why it works so well, right? So yeah. um, um like two oh. days ago or something, uh the Better Call Saul um last season premiered and uh Michael McKean is is uh Saul's brother in the first few episodes of that show and it, like it's not a comedy role like he plays it incredibly seriously like he uses his regular voice obviously and he's the he's the brother that like has agoraphobia and thinks that if he goes outside like the radiation's gonna get him or whatever and he plays that role masterfully and I completely forgot that he's the same actor in Spinal Tap because I saw Spinal Tap so many times as a kid <laughs> yeah man Roseanne must have confused you as a kid <laughs> well, I mean, Which yeah, John Goodman is it? <laughs> fantastic performances in this one, of course. Yeah, you know, Jerry, you got kind of cheated out of of your intro uh, a, a little Sorry. bit, but but we're uh, but we're we're happy that you're here with us. One thing I really want to talk about uh, the usage of costumes and props. Now, Devo, known for costumes and props, and you mentioned the Stonehenge thing. I think that's so amazing because the whole the 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 bit is that. It's supposed to be uh, 18 feet. feet. Not inches, yeah. <laughs> they mark it as 18 inches. So they have this tiny little stone hedge that is uh, yeah. that, that is incredible. And I mean, I, I know first time I saw that, I was, you know, bawling it, laughing, and then like later on laughing for different reasons. Uh, but I, I mean, that kind of thing, that happened, right? Especially in the non-internet age. Oh, yeah. All of that happens. All of it. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times like I'm measuring some artwork and, and I'm using like the, the little hatch marks for a feet and inches. And I always feel like I fuck them up, but I'm just like, whatever. I know what they mean. Nobody. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> handing yeah. this off to anybody. To... Yeah. If you're the only one that <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you I can, can get away with it. Um, but, but like, like I, as soon as they pulled out that napkin, I just like felt this flash of shame. Right. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> everything's done on the fly and off the cuff, and then they hand it off to some technicians. Then they never see it until it happens. That is all <laughs> true. We're laughing because it's sad and true. Yeah, That's what people laughed at ever since the first films, ever since Slapstick. You're laughing at stupidity. You're laughing at mishaps and pain, whether it's psychological or physical. And mm -hmm. Spinal Tap put it all you know, in a very concentrated Powerball. They got every true joke in one film that you could do. And and also the fact that they just kind of suck as a band and everyone acknowledges throughout the movie that they suck and they're just constantly kind of getting, uh, you know, like they're constantly getting uh, their egos, I think, torn down, which is, you know, inherently a, a funny uh, a premise, I guess, because, you know. Or, or your kiss or your kiss and you suck and everybody loves you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, true. I think in Spinal Tap kind of has both of those <laughs> things going. I think that's one of the things that makes it so oh, Kiss uh, does suck. <laughs> and when you listen to the, the interviews of Simmons and, um, you know, and his partner, they're perfect. They're, it's like a Spinal Tap script. Yeah, no, it, it is It is quite incredible how Kiss-like uh, the, whole, the whole thing is. Yeah. Well, there's that whole glam element mm -hmm. mixed in there. It glittery. feels like it feels like Kiss is almost like the logical conclusion of that era of like glam, like glam amphitheater rock, and they yeah, make fun of that like, in this movie. Because uh, Kiss is like a boy band. Yeah. Like, I mean, let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just made me really happy with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, again, Devo was a you know a movement first and then a band. Right. And, and you took what you did very seriously, but the absurdism was kind of baked into the entire concept. There was a self-awareness to it. Right. Well, we were serious about our joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, do you, <laughs> like, you have to be. Otherwise, you, you can't sell exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You have to be serious when you're joking. I mean, we did say we're all Devo and we didn't exempt ourselves from that because we knew better. Um, humans are, you know horribly conflicted, capable of great things and unmeasured evil at the same time. And, uh, and evil tends to win out most of the time on this planet. So we were admitting the absurdity of it all. That was based in the look, in the lyrics, in the movements on stage. Nobody would have mistaken us for being staged by a choreographer. Right. <laughs> well, and that's in and of itself was unique and and interesting uh, in the time. And it, it, the fact that what you were doing was so different as well is something that, you know, led to a lot of bands and, and artists like looking at it and being like, aha, yeah. maybe I don't want to sound just like that or look just like that. But there's a different way to approach this. Well, we were trying to let the audience in on the satire. Like you're with us. Right. We're not trying to sell you on something else. Yeah. And it's, it's considering how much, uh, <laughs> considering how much, uh, yes, the best case interview was when Ace Frehley was drunk on Tom Snyder. That's, that's correct. <laughs> that was Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd feel worse if I wasn't under such heavy sedation. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it just it's it strikes me that what Devo did was just, you know, so unique at the time, uh, and again, it led to the whole. And we talked about this, Jerry, when you've been on Protonic before, that almost like you know the, the children of Devo, like the the, the <laughs> bands that have come since then, that like maybe it has less to do with the music, but more to do with the approach and the critical thinking and and the uh, healthy embrace of the absurd. Well, uh, yeah, that's it. The world, the world view. We have that meta worldview that has persisted because guess what? De-evolution is real, and I don't think anybody would even contest that now. Yes, I think that that's with considering uh, Christina. What what was the, what you watched the Amber Heard Johnny Depp oh. like, depositions in real time? Shit on the bed. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Amber Heard. <laughs> That's what we're calling her now. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a little shit on the bed. It's not. You know. but it, it's so crazy though that uh, Eve Eve Barlow or whatever her like uh, Amber Heard's new like girlfriend. super Zionist uh, girlfriend that is the person that everybody hates on Twitter because she posts like 
all of the like pro IDF um, uh, propaganda or whatever ran into the trial and had to be removed from it. Um, and they had to bar her from it. Wow. <laughs> I have not been Power at all. Right I have no idea about any of this. I've been so, keeping up with it. Well, the yeah, best part, though, is that her uh, uh, Amber Heard's lawyer said that uh, she's not a journalist. <laughs> we need the disclaimer that's it we needed that okay <laughs> hey. uh from her yeah. own lawyer no less I, I, I mean and i think it's I, I i love so going back to the movie right i i love their interactions with the press you know such yeah. such as they are uh classic classic Perfect. examples classic tropes and yeah, yeah and you have little small characters like um like the paul schaefer character the radio promoter guy right yeah and, this cast is insane yeah and and we were we were talking about the uh i was talking about the uh the scene where they go to do the signing that nobody shows up to uh and then that's uh and i was talking about it with uh with with brian earlier and it, it that's such a trope of just no. like oh they, they're working hard to do something you know, like where there's going to be, oh, the fans are going to meet Spinal Tap and they're going to sign records. And it's just played completely straight. There's nobody there. But you see uh, Harry Shearer is just sitting there blowing his nose and kind of sniffling. And that's the only sound that's being made. It's an incredibly depressing tableau of, of uh, quote unquote promotion, radio promotion. It's a sad comeback. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and... I mean, it's it's hard to describe for like the younger viewers and the, the younger uh, listeners of the show that like that was a big deal. If you wanted to be known by audiences, you had to be played on the radio. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. you have people like this Paul Schaefer character, you know, very well-meaning that like, uh, you know, is basically known for his glad handing and, and perhaps for the party drugs and, uh, you know, plied his trade. Hmm. And uh, I mean, I don't know. Was that was that on point, Jerry? I mean, you were you were. There. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we would we would land in a town, and before we could go to the hotel, we went to the radio station. That was what the machinery of the label would do: We'd go from the airport to the radio station, do your duty, and the guys with the the really long hair and baseball jackets that had been you know, usually paid off by independent promoters with coke and prostitutes. Debo didn't garner that. So nobody had paid them with coke or prostitutes. So Debo comes to the station, these nerds with short hair and, you know, just dressed very austerely. And they were so bummed out by us. They hated us. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And then when Whip It became a hit, then they started to change. But then we ruined that, too, because they'd go, hey, Whip It, hey. <laughs> or, they'd, or they'd make the Whip It. <laughs> oh. <And it's> like, <laughs> hey, you guys want to talk about s and m and, and I go, it's really not about that. And then they just frown, like, what? Not about that. Get this guy. <laughs> uh, my mom wanted to say she's a huge Devo fan too, so I was like, "Yeah, I'm hanging with a guy who's Lisa or Devo." She was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like she's like, "I remember when like the music video premiered." I'm like, "I forgot that you're like, my mom was there when like MTV first started and all yeah. of that." Yeah. So there, there's just a lot of history. What was the '81 when yes. MTV started? Well, MTV '81 yes. went national, like went national franchise. They had three stations the year before that in three oh. cities. Uh, and they were playing, they didn't have any content. They had four Devo videos, Radio Killed the uh, Video, video, killed, star. radio, video star. killed the Radio Star. Yeah. And, and uh, Ashes to Ashes, the David Mamet oh, yeah. uh, video for Bowie. And they would Mamet do that one? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, and they would just rotate those videos. And they go, we're, we can't pay you, but we're going to make you big stars. And then, of course, what happened <laughs> What happened was when they went franchise national with, with, with uh, American Express money, uh, suddenly they tied their playlist to the top 40 FM station playlist. And no longer did videos or original stuff matter at all. No matter how cool the video was, if your song wasn't in the top 40 rising, you weren't going to get on MTV. So that's why you started seeing every video looking alike, like it was 
factory stamped. Like, yeah. here's the pissed off girl who throws the glass. Here's the flowers that break on the floor when they were really made of ice and glass. <laughs> you know, Sounds uh, like the November <laughs> Rains video. <laughs> oh, a thousand of them. It, it's the base bits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, and and you're no stranger to the format as well, because one of the things that you know, if, if folks that are avid devotees will know, but maybe uh, the casual fan might not, the video element was huge to what you yes. guys did uh, yeah. from the very beginning, and yeah. it it was such a nice confluence of there, yeah, there being a time where the freaks were let in for a minute and a half, right, and then uh, you know there, there was a moment, there was there was a moment that where was you. It. Had, yeah, and that was about that was about the long and short of it. No, I mean we were we were the geeks who actually thought we were making, you know, music driven short films. That's what we were doing. There was no MTV. Yeah. So that was the, our big idea. <laughs> and it got reduced to promo that was basically worthless, couldn't be monetized. Mm. Yeah, Give they were list. incredible, though. You guys did a great job on <laughs> <Yeah>. those. <laughs> At least they were Absolutely. they were real and they were done for no money because yeah. we weren't getting a big hunk of money to do them. We would do them ourselves. Yeah, no, they're well, very I, enjoyable. They are, and they were very ahead of their time too. Like things like I, I'm I'm thinking back to uh, you know the video that had like the the sort of like super saturated color. Um, uh, was it girl you want? I think that like yeah, uh, yeah. We 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 reversed the phase on the color on purpose. Yeah, it was, like, it was like a video mistake that we saw, and we said, "Okay, we're doing that." <laughs> and I love that kind of, and that, and to have them all, and they're in the, I'm sure they're just on the internet wherever people find that stuff. But uh, the, I love that was for the, free. Uh, <laughs> there's a DVD too, though. There's a DVD that has all of them for people that enjoy physical media. If I had days, if I had the DVD, I guess they do Blu-rays now, right? Sorry, I'm dating myself. Uh, if I had the Blu-ray for Spinal Tap, I could have seen it with the commentary track where they do it in character, which is astounding and basically a separate movie. And I guess that's on YouTube too, which Forrest had to show me. That's good. Yeah, that's it's like good. when R. Kelly sat in the uh, <laughs> empty theater talking about trapped in the closet. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's amazing. It's Spinal Tap. It, it, <laughs> you know yeah. what? I never would have. a really good point. Yeah. I never would have thought we'd be talking about trapped in the closet tonight. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a soap opera. No, a hip, a hip hop. When I go to the closet, yeah. I'm in the closet. Fantastic. <laughs> and then we're trapped in the closet. How about when he's the guys, this preacher's coming back and going to catch him, and he goes, Baby, I'll jump out the window. She says, Oh, no, baby, you on the fifth floor. <laughs> now that's that's good oh man oh. They, they have like they have the they have the gay subplot then they have the subplot like with the with the you know the uh little person in, in involved they, they in got it all they have they have, they they have so like i remember watching it like a really long time ago and every single time i was surprised like they would end it on that note and i'd be like oh what's, what's gonna happen like you cannot predict what's gonna happen next <laughs> and then when he sings about pulling the beretta out of the dresser he, he in the commentary track he goes now a beretta is not my favorite weapon but i needed something to rhyme with dresser <laughs> come on Clearly, <laughs> yes. I mean, that's that's some David St. Hubbins business right there. It's incredible. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Beretta, Anna, Anna, Anna. I, I like I like his uh, you know his fade out too. <laughs> Always, yeah. <laughs> you can so, sit under my umbrella. <laughs> I like uh, I like I like Weird Al's version of it where he did uh, trapped in the drive thru Mm -hmm. And he did his own version. Of, I mean, it's like 11 minutes or something, but he did his own version of like an episode of it where he's like talking to his wife about going to get food and then they can't decide on something. So they end up going to McDonald's and getting trapped in the drive through. <laughs> <laughs> and Weird Al. And that's Spinal Tap too. It is. It, it is. And, and Weird Al made, I think, one of the best Devo songs that you guys didn't make, which is Dare to be Stupid. Yes. Which is astounding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he ever contact you guys about doing like an homage or anything along those lines? no he didn't he just did it he, he's he didn't ask for the rights no because yeah, it's no. a parody yeah 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 you're allowed to do that yeah style parodies are a little different it, it's uh, way better than his they might be giants one he did yeah <laughs> i don't spend too much time thinking about weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know, it's in that, I mean, you call yourself Weird Al and you do parodies. That's easy. That's in that kind of like Dr. Demento world. It's goofy, you know, and that's it. Like, I'm goofy. It. I'm being goofy. Watch this. Shaving um, cream. You know, that's a, that's yeah. a classic Demento. Yeah. yeah. Um, those are especially great, especially when you're a young boy. Those are especially great. I can't speak to <laughs> hearing them now necessarily. But well, what makes Spinal Tap so great is it, it always stays above that high-end satire, above parody and silly, you know, geeky jokes. It, it doesn't let you off the hook. It's really good. And that's, that's yeah, true. and and I think that it's kind of almost understated in the sense of like, you know, I mean, the, the you know, bands at that point cuz they're a, they're a band that just kind of in the movie anyway have have done a whole bunch of different styles, right? Like they show you the yeah. uh hippie turn that they were doing. They show you yeah. like um yeah. So they kind of are looking for their sound the entire movie, but they're also kind of like understated in a way. You know what I mean? Like it's not like you you feel like these are actual uh musicians that you're looking at. They don't exactly. play the laughs. They, you know, like 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 uh I think like Dewey Cox, like Walk Hard, that movie like goes out of its way to make it as over the top as possible. And that's a right. funny movie. But I like that right. Final Tap didn't do that and they kind of make it right. so that it's almost like it could be I mean it's ridiculous, but like it almost could be a uh, um like an actual rockumentary. Yeah, where yeah. Walk Hard's kind of campy in that way. Yeah, yeah. Final Tap avoids that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Rock Hard because yeah, it's exactly you know aesthetically in terms of comedy the other direction, and it's yeah. easier in a way. The running gag about, dude, you don't want to do this drug. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want nothing to do with this, do we? <laughs> It'll make you feel real good, real powerful. <laughs> Why wouldn't I want to do that? <laughs> Every time, yeah. it'll turn all your bad feelings into good ones. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's the the, the Tom Hanks film, uh, that thing you do, that mm -hmm. nailed some things properly. Oh wow, I did not expect that to be referenced uh, tonight. Yeah, either. but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. Like I sometimes forget that that film exists at times. I'm like, oh, Tom Hanks did a film like that once, and now he's going to play the Colonel. Oh, Sanders? Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, the colonel. The, the, the colonel for the Elvis. Oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. The manager. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 That, um, so, I which is weird because, like, you're going to want to like him and you don't want to like the colonel. No. Yeah. Really screwed up Hollywood his, likes uh, to, yeah. career. Yeah. Hollywood likes to do that, likes to get actors you love and let them play bad guys so that it doesn't get too real. <laughs> yeah. Well, never thought about that before. So Jerry, I'm gonna. We're gonna go ahead and uh, we we're gonna. We first of all, thank you so much for coming on for this. this thank you. Great, great talking to you about Spinal Tap. Uh, I would like to bring on very briefly, if you don't mind, some overlap here, uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Teasley, Manor Astro Man, a right. band that I would say is very much a child of Devo, <laughs> uh, and and a good dude and, and, a, and a very funny guy. And there's a lot of people on this freaking show. <laughs> <laughs> two more. Hey, you asked for it. I, you know what? Where are the other two? You're not wrong. You're not. You're not wrong. Uh, it's everyone for Chris Murphy. I don't know why I just don't bring Chris Murphy on again. But uh, by the way, Crybaby, do you like the film Crybaby? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's a great film. <laughs> just check it. It is. It's, it's, sure. it, it's a it's a better film than it has any right to be too. It's one yeah. of those films, right? Yeah, Where like you know, hear, the, hear the plot of it and you're like, oh, that's not going to be any good. And then you see it and you're like, no, all right, this is actually a pretty. Yeah. Good, it's great. Film. Yeah. John hey, Waters Conan, Camp. Conan, this is Brian from Manor Astro Man. While, while Jerry's still on, I want to ask him a question, if that's Please. okay. Please, I was hoping you would. Um, I'm broadcasting here in Birmingham, Alabama, about uh, uh, of all places, about a mile from where Sun Ra was born. Uh -huh. And there is a real infamous show that Devo played in 1975 That's with right. the Co-Bill with Sun Ra, okay. um, which seemed to have some Spinal Tap type of elements to it itself. Totally. And um, uh, how was that, Jerry? What, what was that experience like? You know, in retrospect, we, we have pumped it up apocryphally into something great, but it was pretty horrible that night. Right. But, uh, I mean, we were, um, we got the gig by me lying and saying we were a cover band. <laughs> and, uh, Love it. And so 
whatever works. Yeah. <laughs> by about the third song, when we, we played Be Stiff, I, I said, here's one by Bad Company. And we played Be Stiff. <laughs> I love Bad Company. And of course, all the, all the audience, it's a Halloween party for WMMS Radio, mm, mm. big FM station. So all the people associated with the station that were invited to the party, it was costume party. So they're all in like the typical cliched Frankenstein, werewolves. The girls are all in prostitute clothing. And uh, they're, they're going upstairs and they're doing nitrous oxide. And, and so there, there's all these kind of jockey guys in monster outfits. And they're getting more pissed off by the minute. So they <laughs> attack us when we start Are, are We Not Men, Jocko Homo. Yeah. They physically attack us on stage. Because Mark starts going, are we not men? And guy grabs the mic and goes, you're fucking assholes, motherfucker. We're going to kick your fucking ass. And they just, they came up on stage and they started ripping apart our equipment. And our road crew and them started fighting. And we exited out the back door. And we went to a uh, terrible restaurant that everybody used to love to go to, Captain Frank's. It's, it's featured in the movie Stranger Than Paradise. Oh when yeah, they're the, right. yeah. When they're in the dead of winter, they're outside Captain Frank's looking at a frozen lake Erie. And of course, everything there was fried and breaded. And we went there and just, uh, you know, we were so relieved to not be inside. And we were eating the fried and breaded stuff. And then we go, well, let's go back. So we go to our van and we change out of our Devo clothes into just our streetwear. <laughs> and nobody recognized us. And we're in the party. <laughs> and Sun Rock comes off. And these people are all drunk now and wasted. And Sun Rock comes on. And he started a jam that he didn't get off of. He, it lasted 25 minutes. And he started chanting, only 25 years till the 21st century. 25 years till century 21. 25 years. And he just kept it up. And the musicians started piling on and piling on and building it and building it. And these people were just like leaving in droves. We were the only ones left sitting there going, this is cool. It was Debo watching Sun Ra. <laughs> That's how the night ended. That's You know, it's sometimes it takes a lot more bravery to uh, drive an audience off than to keep them there. And, yeah. uh, and that sounds like the right audience to do it to. So I just, I, I love the fact that you guys and Sun Ra were on the same deal, yeah. regardless of what happened. Just however it happened. There. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Brian uh, Teasy yeah. already providing value for the show, by the way. Well, well I have to. <laughs> I have it to, wasn't. We weren't worthy. We shouldn't have been allowed oh, no. for Sun Ra. <laughs> well, I have to say, I don't like Dare to be Stupid either. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like. Cheap uh, shot. It, well, it's kind of the difference between. Uh, do you know Bad News, which was. Uh, the, the guys in the young ones kind of predated spinal tap with bad news in 83 and it's the most crass like it's great in its own way but it's crass it's very surface level whereas spinal tap what makes it great is there's this universal element of re regardless of how big your band is you can relate to, there's a universal element to everything and there's actually not to sound super pretentious but there's just this you know, pathos to, uh, uh, especially Nigel and David, the connection between the two. And it's kind of the same with dare to be stupid and Devo to me, because weird Al's just like, Oh, these guys are like wearing, um, matching outfits and there's a French fry going in a donut or whatever. And there's nothing of that biting social commentary. Like it completely misses the point. And out of, out of all things to parody, it seemed, Strange. Well, we That's, made it easy I, for people to make fun of us on purpose. Sure, and you can parody anything. I mean, you know, no matter what it is. But right, um, I just wanted to agree with you on that point because that one always was like, you know, just because it, it's not even a Devo song either. You know, it's no. like most of the time he will get the right. right, right. Or, Stop sucking up, Teasley. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> sucking up. I, I had to. I, I had to agree. Shots fired. <laughs> it, I don't like. No. It. It's so trivial. It's, he's trivial. Well, this is not my own. This is not my only disagreeing point, Conan. Also, I think Spinal Tap is a great band. It's hard to play, like not poorly written songs, but songs that are specifically cheesy in very specific ways. It's easy to do your thing and do it well, but um, 
it really takes the kind of season special musicians and training that they all had to pull off that record. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to do a record like that. You know, right. I fully, I fully agree. I fully the, agree. the, yeah. the baselines, You're back in my the, okay list easily. Thank you. The baselines on like big bottom. It's like, who comes up with that? It's ridiculous, <laughs> but it's also genius. So <laughs> well, those are the only two issues I've had. So otherwise we're good. Okay. So, uh, so, so first of all, I guess we could, we should mention that uh, yeah, Brian Teasley is an American musician, producer, writer, and entrepreneur from Alabama, founding member of Man and Raster Man, big bird stuff, and Servotron. He's played with such artists as Polyphonic Spree, The Causey Way, and St. Vincent. He's also the proprietor of Saturn in Alabama. Uh, and also, as one of our two bass players on this panel, Chris Murphy, of course, coming up next, Jerry, Big Bottom was invoked. Uh, what are your what are your thoughts on Big Bottom? <laughs> I loved it. I, who doesn't like Big Bottoms? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I, he he's whatever was said was absolutely accurate. That it's not just bad. These songs are coming from a place where they truly understand what they are making fun of in a substantive way, and it's it's the smartness of the comedy that makes you laugh and keeps you watching. I mean, Spinal Tap's a smart movie. And uh, before I go, I'd like to vote for a movie that nobody knows how smart it is for you to include in the future. And that Space is... Space Call Success? No, uh, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. <gasps> oh, I love oh, that oh. film. Yes. Yeah. Listen to the music in no. that. Yes. We Would should you come back on and talk to us about that movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Z-Man Ronnie Barcel, baby. <laughs> uh jerry casali thank you so much for coming right. on it's, it's such a thank big you. honor to have you and uh uh we we, we don't take it lightly and, <laughs> oh, oh, oh shoot shoot i totally forgot uh i'm supposed to mention you have a new record you have well, a new record you wish yeah, record. yeah it was just a well it's kind of new it, it's like jihad, it's a jihad jerry record with new stuff and new songs new songs on it including some of the old ones, but yeah, Jerry and the evildoers on red vinyl, including my latest song and video. Uh, I'm going to pay you back. I, which is great. I'm truly happy with the video. I did it with Davey force, the, the CGI artist that uses AI uh, programs to mess with live action. Uh, it's worth seeing. You can see it anywhere on YouTube. I'm going to pay you back. And uh, you can get that at, uh, at the website. We'll put that in the show notes. Uh, it's great. So I recommend that people, especially devotees that may or may not have the best searchable skills necessarily, <laughs> uh, check it out. Check it out and, and, and buy a copy because it's, it's a nice it's a talking deep. to you guys. Really nice talk. Thank, uh, thank, thank you, you so much for doing it, Jerry. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. There he is, Jerry Casali. He was happy to put those headphones down. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll yeah. take what I can get. Anyway. Right? No, no. Hey, and congratulations on your eighth uh, anniversary. Thanks, Thanks. Yeah, I just like I have to do the most labor-intensive and bizarre thing possible. Uh, I don't want to forget <laughs> how long you've endured this. Eight, eight <laughs> years. So, badge of honor to you. Uh, it's it's a it's a pleasure to have you on, man. Uh, this 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 is. Uh, this this is a this is a fun time because I get to like all the people that I'm breaking on are people that are just people I love talking to also and they also happen to be like very big in my world. Uh, so I, one thing I want to talk to you about, Brian, was uh, and w- that we didn't talk about on the phone earlier today is uh, the- we talk on the phone every 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 morning for brunch. <laughs> we have what a, we brunch, do. a brunch call. You guys have a brunch call every morning. Every day <laughs> we talk about you actually. Can yeah, I join? Can I join in? Yeah, yes, I mean, we've been we've been searching for other people. Just a little <laughs> jealous here. <laughs> Ryan and I. <laughs> back and forth. Um, I have a I have a clip to introduce the next segment of of stuff. Oh, uh, awesome, awesome! So Forrest is going to play a clip, and then we'll uh, yeah, we'll we'll speak about it because that's what we do on this show, which is different from my show, which is freewheeling and one on one. And clearly, I'm very comfortable with all of that. The freewheeling cone and neutron. That's the that's right yeah. coming <laughs> coming next year. Apparently, with everything else. <laughs> Oh great! Awesome! I know. I know what this one is. It's the it's the one on uh, big bottom. 
Uh, one day we, we looked out in the audience and we noticed that a, a lot of the girls in the front, in, in the front row. Well, not in the front. Had, well, had, had a big they back had row. very little front. Had a big yeah. back row. Had a big back row. They had their own, in the front row, they had their own back row. That's yeah. right. And I don't know what it is about this group, uh, but we do attract the larger posterior well, uh, woman. Since this song was written, this is... Oh, yeah, and I'm saying like before that, like before that, that, it was what inspired that was yeah. the fact that a lot of our fans were, were, were you know, were sitting on a great deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were part of that deal, I think. Yeah, well, it, it, uh, I think it's fair to say that if, uh, if I have one real contribution that I've made to Western civilization, it's that riff at the start of Big Bottom. It's iconic. It's, uh, and that's, what, that, what riff yeah, are you talking about? Yeah. The iconic one. Yeah, it's iconic, except you didn't come up with it. What are you talking about? David came up with that. He you played it on guitar, and then you played it on bass. No, no, not quite. No, historically, I think he's right. I think he did come up with that. Uh, then he played it on yeah. guitar, da, 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 and then da, da, I learned da, da, it off of him. Da, 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 da. That was me. Yes. That's what happened. Yeah, but yeah. 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 That, 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 yeah. that was yeah. That's yeah. my. That's okay. my. That's, Fair enough. Yeah. It's iconic. No, it's but it's iconic. always nice to uh, do a show, look out in the uh, crowd, and see uh, women with uh, large uh, tushies. You know, I think that's we, an American term we've learned. Yeah, tush, tushy, tush, yeah. touche. Yeah, uh, it's a French. It's a French word for. Uh, I think that we were actually ahead of our time. We always and behind been. everything else. Yeah. Mm. Uh, ahead of our time, behind the curve. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, who's the one who did "Baby Got Back"? Right. Uh, uh, so, so it's a lot. That's that weird commercial, right? No, it's before that. No, yeah. no, baby. No, you're thinking of "Baby Back" ribs. Ah, no, got no back. "Baby Got Back." Yeah. Uh, and that was like years after. Ripped us off. We did. Ripped yeah. us off completely. Yeah. yeah. Off. It's did not the a, first time. Did we see a penny no. from it? No. 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 We saw one dime. And so no. So that's ten yeah. pennies. Yeah. yeah. But it, the great thing about this song is, I think, it it it, it puts a picture in your mind. So when you hear that riff, you hear that song. You see up, it. You yeah. see. Yeah. Them jiggling. Yeah, yeah, I think any good song really does that where you it evokes an image yeah. and in big bottom you know it's really right in front it of you it invokes it and it revokes it right in front yeah. of you and of course great. musically for all your musos out there you can hear there's three basses yeah oh yeah uh, and a lot of bass keyboard and mainly the bass, bass drum yeah uh, at um live uh, uh, we had 19 19 bass players it was an odd number that's all i remember yeah 19 yeah. bass a lot of them were pretty odd, odd yeah. 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 No, we had some some serious. You can't attack. have too many bases, really. No. If you think of physically, it. you cannot overload the base spectrum. No, no, it's impossible. No. 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 And people, historically, people. And this goes way back. Love hearing low sounds. It's yeah. like whales and orangutan and various yeah. creatures of the night. They love a low sound. Whales are creatures of the night. Well, they sure. What do you think they do? Well, it's always dark where they are. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Water, but yeah. that's not night. It's not always dark because they swim near the surface. No, and it's light. Not very. No, light. they don't. No, huh? only no. when they know there's a ship full of people. Yeah, they're watching they, them. Then they, they come up. Breach. They yeah. take the, the close up. Yeah. But so that's the that's pretty much the story of uh, big big bottom. bottom. Yeah. yeah. It may be the single most covered non-hit in the history of rock and roll. Wow. Yeah. It's quite a distinction, isn't it? It's a distinction without a difference. Amazing. Vampires, whales, both creatures of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creatures of the night. <laughs> well, it's always uh, dark where they are. I don't. <laughs> I, I like that they did the kind of looking like shit part of stuff, like where they didn't try to like spruce themselves up. They just put on the old wigs that still don't that don't look realistic now, you know what I mean? And just like mm -hmm. went for it rather than kind of trying to like recreate their look from, uh, from the eighties. <laughs> yeah. We had yeah. a double bass at one point, um, a guitar with two necks, basically. A oh, there was an the EVAC tour, right? Yeah. And there was, uh, that was kind of the second lineup of the, our band and two of the guys, both on stage, right. Um, uh, Sky Ritchie and Rob, our bass player, looked very similar. So instead of doing like let's have a song with two basses, because there what there was two bass parts in the song, we had them just kind of reach uh Richie reach over Rob and play the top neck while he played the bottom neck. And I didn't really realize until I saw a video on YouTube, it basically because they look so similar, it looks like somebody 
in a weird astronaut jumpsuit having sex with themselves while playing the bass guitar. <laughs> it's pretty uh, creepy and also enjoyable in a strange way to watch. Much like that exact scenario, I'm sure. It also yeah. looks like the goddess Kali. I will also say, <laughs> like, as someone that saw those shows and like I was for that as well. And any any base scenario that inv that involves you looking like the goddess Kali is okay. well, obviously so it's arousing yet base solo. -y. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, you know the part about Spinal Tap that I really relate to is the Air Force. Oh my um, god! The so Air Force good. gig where you're just like completely, and you know what happens often? Those gigs, um, you know, even if you're a small, modest, trivial band like we have been over the years, uh, you, every once in a while you'll have a weird money gig that will come up, and you're like, should we? Should we do this? This is going to be torturous, but also, eh, we'll probably still cash the check. And we did one. So the worst show I've ever played was this show in 1999 at a Linux convention and um, like the out operating system? Valley, the operating system. Oh my God. <laughs> and we went out there and I was like, and it was like a, a big payday for us. And I was like, okay, but here's the thing. I'm not even going to put enough effort to like take drumsticks out. We're just going to send them our, you know, everything we need to play and make them get it because I don't even want to do this, but we'll do it. So we show up and the guy, you know, and the the, the Linux logo was the this penguin with kind of a, a scarf on. It was a weird logo. Mm -hmm. um, it was a cool idea because it's this open based operating system. I guess it's still around. And the promoter guy uh, comes out with these like, you know, that was the 90s when everybody wore like an XXXL T-shirt, even if you weighed 140 pounds. And he was like, hey, can you guys wear these when you play? Like, I don't, we don't really all want to be wearing Linux t-shirts while we're presenting our band. And everything was wrong about the equipment. Like, I'm talking about to the point where the drumsticks they got were like timbali sticks. And they were like flexing when I was hitting the drums. And then he said, okay, I'm trying to decide if you guys are going to go on before or after the Bill Gates impersonator. And... <laughs> And so we, we went on after the Bill Gates impersonator and this like, it looks like that military base, like the tables are 30 yards away. Nobody knows who we are. Nobody cares. And we're too loud. And right. His introduction to us was, um, that Bill Gates impersonator was pretty good. I don't know if these guys can top it, but they're going to try. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's a vote of confidence. And then, equipment wasn't working as the only time like a couple of us have just left stage and ended as like a two piece and we went back to the hotel and it was like one of those old hotels with two, two shared rooms two of us per room and friday the 13th part three and 3d was on and we all sat on a bed we all sat on a bed together and watched it and didn't say a goddamn word it was the salient point is it's, it's in 3d right Right. It, we weren't getting the 3D part, obviously. It was a CRT TV. So, but I think everybody's had those, you know, had those type of experience. A friend of mine, uh, this guy that was part of Survival Research Laboratories, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it was uh, yeah, a group yeah. based out of San Francisco. Right. When we, well, yeah, exactly. When we were started making Tesla coils and getting in that weird world, we started hanging out with those guys. And you too had gotten them to build some of their staging i believe it was the tour they called the pop mark tour and there was this giant lemon I block this from my memory but i remember this now yeah so there's this giant lemon they had that song called lemon you know and uh and so this lemon is supposed to come out over the crowd and they get out of the lemon and bono does his thing <laughs> And it, I think it was Rotterdam. Only totally Spinal Tap, by the way. All of this is 100% Spinal Tap. It was, it, it was the first night, and it was Rotterdam. And they couldn't get you 2 out of the lemon. And I just would kill to have even just a photograph of the Edge and Bono, or maybe Larry Mullen Jr. would be the good stoic starer of it and be like, this was your fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> the we're, in a, not, we're in a goddamn yeah. giant lemon in Rotterdam over the crowd. So, you know, getting back to that universal element of Spinal Tap, it's like no matter how big or small you are, there's things that 
you relate to. It speaks to almost everybody that's ever been in a rock band. Even and the that, Edge. Uh, even, even the Edge and Larry Mullen Jr. Uh, I think that that's, that's a good point. And one thing that I really want to talk about, and I have chosen you, Pikachu, to talk about this, is that uh, the Spinal Tap, Oh, sorry, Puppet Show and Spinal Tap, like those kind of moments. And I think everyone that's played in a band has been in those kinds of like, oh, this is this this is this is what this is, huh? This is the the Puppet Show and Spinal Tap sort of element of uh, where you don't even get the top billing for like an absurd scenario, which kind of ties into your, hey, will you wear these Linux shirt story? Uh, I'll reverse that though. I uh, I have been the Puppet Show for somebody in a situation like that. Um, you mentioned this band I was in called Servitron, Conan. I love Servitron. This, this band, uh, nobody knows this band, but it was a band that dressed up like robots and kind of played new wave music. And our whole shtick was, we want to kill all the humans. It was, you know, pretty, pretty basic thing. It was like a side project for Manor Astro Man. And we played this place called the Mermaid Lounge in New Orleans. And we had gotten booked with, uh, and you know that band, Conan, so this will be a little funny to you. We had got booked with Dave Perner from Soul Asylum uh, <laughs> Solo. And this was kind of like after, well after Winona Ryder had dropped him, the, the money they from- They dated. I forgot about that. They runaway dated. train is all oh, gone. And he's just, there's no backstage. It's like this old dingy kitchen. And I went up to him. I said, um, I said, you know, uh, um, we'd like to go on before you because he was actually going on before us because we're kind of an opening band. We're not really a headliner. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's okay. It'll, it, he's like, and I was like, well, I want to tell you one thing about our band. Our, we're robots. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And it's like, no, like we're fucking robots. It's like, and then like, at, like the 10 fans that we had there were these punk kids that were heckling the whole time. It was, and he ended up making with some rough looking bartender or something. It, it was, it was a sad <laughs> night for Dave Perner. It was a glorious night for me though. Uh, so I've been the puppet show is my point. You've been, you've been the, the, the titular puppet show in that situation. Right. I think I actually have a, uh, do I have, do we have a Servitron? I can, I can, I can find a Servitron. Well, uh, please don't picture. No, no, no. I think oh, it's a picture. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're not, don't, don't worry. We, we're, uh, it's not going to get that, uh, produced. I, I, but I appreciate when I say that, like this, the Spinal Tap plus Puppet Show, like just the absurdity of being in like a, a bizarre scenario, right? A bizarre scenario where there's there's crazy, there's crazy things going on, not necessarily rock and roll oriented. There you go. There's some there's some Servatron for you, right? Uh, we're we're fucking robots. So imagine, imagine the fellow from Soul Asylum, and this band. And that's 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 the bill. So that's, that that's sounds a, like a great bill. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a bill for. Hold on a second. Let's let's put this. It's on no the Sunrise Devo. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is really so right. like? So what's funny is I can totally see the see the scenario and the absurdity and like the awesomeness of it from both the Dave Herner standpoint and the Servertron standpoint. Like I, I I would be into that, but I clearly have a healthy embrace of the absurd. Um, but I think that that's amazing. But it, it also, one of the things I like about the Spinal Tap Plus Puppet Show show is when they're making the set list, right? And like, oh, what songs can we play, you know, without the night, without Nigel, without the uh, Christopher Guest character? Because at that point, he's quit the band, right? And so Derek Smalls, Harry Sure says, Tonight's the night, guys. Let's do it. Jazz Odyssey. <laughs> Right? Does everyone remember the scene? Am I the only one that's like yeah, hyper? Yeah, yeah, no, I remember the scene. Yes. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, Jazz Odyssey. I think everybody's kind of had that night where, like, le who cares? Like, let's just let's just freeform it tonight. <laughs> we did a tour with Zingarella one time, and they <laughs> they weren't happy a couple nights, and they uh they went Jazz Odyssey on it. It was quite interesting. We've, we've done things like that, but more self-destructive where like, we're just tired of being on tour. We played like the same song, like five or six times in a row to see if anybody noticed just keeping ourselves entertained. But I don't think we've ever done a jazz odyssey. I don't think it's actually possible for us to do that. I think we, we'd have to know how to play jazz or some, nice, some, nice. some, some bastardization of jazz. <laughs> I, so what do, what do you, so Brian, you're, you're incredibly 
thoughtful and, and clever individual. What, what, what are your, what are your thoughts with Spinal Tap? Like what are some, what are some moments we haven't covered yet on, on this show about this incredible movie? Cause I'm sure you have them. Well, I think it's the, you know, it's obviously one of the early examples of, you know, I'll call it a fictional documentary. Like mockumentary kind of sounds like, I don't know. It's gotten where it almost sounds a little demeaning for a film in a certain way. And people would say Christopher Guest is the king of mockumentaries, but it's got you such call a, it a rockumentary. You call it a rockumentary <laughs> or, or a fictional rockumentary, but it's got such yeah. a, um, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, it obviously kind of comes off like there's an influence of them seeing some of those like Maisel's and Penny Baker kind of documentaries. Like there's a, there's a very like element of the pans that go away are very like uh, Dylan's uh, don't look back, you know? And so it's, it's so real. There are other things like that, you know, the, the, um, the ruddles and um, you know, like I said, all you need is cash. Yeah. Like bad news (laughs) was before that. And then, I mean, if you get into bands like the, uh, well, the Archies was and the monkeys, and then you have the cart, you know, you have like the banana splits and Alvin and the chipmunks. If you start counting that stuff, I think Opie Taylor and the Andy Griffith show had a band on one episode. So it's kind of a long history of fictional type bands, but it reminds me of this. I saw this documentary um, about uh, the British scent scene in the late seventies and these, all these kind of cabaret Voltaire and uh, OMD type Sheffield bands were talking about how they knew it was just kind of, over when Gary Newman came out because he just did it better than everyone else. And I feel like that's what Spinal Tap is. It's just like the perfect film and the perfect culmination of um, people that are really, really great at their game, both with improvisation and musically to, um, because they did ad lib almost all of it to some degree. They'd have a, you know, they'd have beats and points they'd have to hit, but like, you, there's a certain kind of level of chops, just comedic chops that you have to have to to get through that. And then there's also, I would imagine, and I haven't read this or know this, but I bet they had a lot of late night dinners where they're talking about the lives of the characters and, you know, because they can't, you know, go against each other. They kind of have a have to have a basis of the origin story. So yeah. it's, it's a juggernaut of a film. It really is. It's a comedic masterpiece. Agreed. Brian, can you hang out for a little bit? And uh, sure, uh, sure. I don't know if you got other things to do, other planets to go to, or anything along. Oh uh, yeah, I've got lots of things to do. Like talk talk about shitty robot bands that I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, uh, I'd also like to bring on uh, Mr. Chris Murphy, Canadian rock and roller, member of the Canadian rock bands Tons, Trans Canada Highwayman, and the Mighty Sloan. Also, returning guest. He came on to do a very special movie. Edgar Wright. Maybe you've heard of it. Forrest, have you heard of this movie? What's it called? Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Goddamn right it is. I don't know what Scott Pilgrim has against me. I'm mad about this still. Um, <laughs> movie, the movie came out 10 years ago. I'm still salty, y'all. <laughs> uh, also, Demand Chris, answers. Chris you, you jumped in and, and helped us out earlier on. Yeah, that, that was terrible. I, did, I could barely hear what was going on. So I want to say, so I want to talk about uh, being in a band with, with you, Brian, and, and mm-hmm. whoever wants to jump in. I just want to talk about some of the things that uh, as a band that we say all the time and quote from this from this movie, obviously the every time uh, every time uh, there's nobody at the show, everybody the the go to thing is is don't worry, it's not a big college town. Like I don't know, do you, do you guys find yourself saying <laughs> you guys find yourself saying that every time there's a shitty like there's nobody in yeah. there. Especially but I, when I it's in a huge Boston. college town. Yeah, yeah I live yeah. in a big retiring yeah. town. <laughs> like that's well, all Boston is. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, the joke in the movie is that it's Boston and it's clearly a, only a college town. But we we, not, uh, we, we did that at a college show once. By well, the way. as as someone in a band, like I to me, to me, that's just shorthand for there's nobody at the show. Like this, obviously, this is not mm-hmm. a big college town because clear, there's nobody here. Um, the other line I really love is. Uh, I'm the guy who gets mandolin mandolin strings in the middle of Austin. Yeah, that's yeah. the uh, Ian Faith. You know the, the the one town you can get mandolin strings. Okay, um, uh, the Fred Willard line. I'm such a fan of yours, not of you and your records, not you specifically, but the rock and roll genre or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Fred Willard. <laughs> what, what I, also, I also really I like uh, I like when he says um, he's like, oh my hair is getting a little shaggy too. Um, 
he he has such good delivery with this. He's yeah, like, he's people like, are oh, gonna start thinking I'm part of the band. Yeah, they're gonna yeah they're gonna <laughs> mistake me for part of the band. He, um, he his delivery on that is like perfect. astounding. Yeah. Uh, I, another another thing that my my favorite visual my visual uh, in in the movie is is the guy at the at the jazz odyssey. There's a guy in the audience. He's got his head in his hand. And the thumbs down sign. So it's, it's so it's it's so good because it's, it's just the one guy and he's just like it's the combination of these things. So like I, <laughs> every time you I, so like I every time I do thumbs down, it, I have to put my head in my hand. It's just like mm -hmm. such a that's the most iconic tableau. Uh, I love have, the. Have you guys ever had somebody do a? Oh, I mean any 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 of you because you're you know you're all musicians. Have you guys ever had like a Fred Willard type? Uh, Oh, yeah. experience with somebody who like you know clearly isn't yeah. in on whatever you're gonna you know about to do i guess and it's kind of a square and it's trying to connect but, but they're like, trying to yeah. make you feel comfortable and yeah. are in fact <laughs> making you feel incredibly <laughs> uncomfortable in the body. yes well just clear they just very clearly don't understand anything about the musical world the music you know like the business of so being I, in a band so in uh, I would just briefly I won't talk about myself too long but uh, but in Canada we're we're we were kind of bigger than we ever got in the states because we were kind of you know distributed by majors up here so we had one foot in the industry and another joke that we always say is like anytime we're at any kind of embarrassing industry function where some goofball is trying to do some kind of pep talk whenever they finish we always say tap into america <laughs> like I, I, you can picture that scene and tap into america where they're going on the tour anyway every industry speak always ends with the tap into america uh these are just random <laughs> thoughts here no no this, this is good this is great chris and i love i love when he cor corrects him he, he was saying it's a blues jazz festival and he corrects him said it was actually jazz blues <laughs> <laughs> It's an important distinction. It's a distinction without uh, a distinction Another without. thing, oh, here's one for bands. I don't know if you do this, but we do this all the time. Whenever there's like a group of people and somebody leaves the group, as soon as they're gone, everybody just says wanker. Right. <laughs> <What a> wanker. <laughs> wanker. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, the, other, the other thing that we say all the time is enormo dome too. Or like the guy, when Howard Hessman's talking about this sort of young yeah, Bon where Jovi. You, where are you playing? Yeah, where are you playing the, today? The enormo dome. <laughs> It's always the place that we're not playing. Um, and of course, I have to go down. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hang out. I have to go downstairs and wait for the limo. It's the ultimate slap in the face. <laughs> like it's this. Uh, these are maybe obvious, but like the, the nightmare of a band of the, the Artie Pupkin in-store, the kick my ass scene, like the nobody's, yes. I've been at those, like the in-store yeah. in mm -hmm. Alabama or something. It's like, you know, wait, wait, what? <laughs> watch out, watch out. <laughs> what uh, that Alabama? Yeah, yeah, no, I. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you go, Brian? You know, you Why know about you Alabama, what, Brian. What town, what town are you from? Are you from Birmingham? <laughs> I am indeed from Birmingham. Yeah. So do you know I'm the Birmingham. little? Do you know the little concert converted Seven Eleven that's in that town? Uh, that used to be a record store. I thought it was like it used to be a venue, and but like we oh, played yeah, there. The but Nick, like, the Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that place. That that's where I always picture right. nobody nobody being at our show. You know, I. I I have a I have a Sloan claim to fame. Um, I was we were playing Lee's Palace or somewhere in Toronto, and I was I was walking around after sound check, and I was near the uh, Much Music building. Yep. And somebody was standing outside. He said, "Hey, you want to be an extra in this uh, Sloan per live performance and dance around and stuff?" And I went in, wow. and you guys played like a live. This I don't know. Maybe this was ninety seven. So oh, like at, at Much Music. At much music, yeah. Oh wow! And um, I, I don't know if a tape of it exists anywhere, but if you ever, uh, if anybody ever goes back and watch it, I am in the audience. <laughs> Which was a Brian fun day. It was a, it was a fun day. So that was, all that over could, the place. It could have been ninety-eight, say. Yeah, that that sounds about right. All right, I'm gonna. I'll look you up. I, I have, of course, I'm an archivist. I have all this junk. I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, there's the 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 uh, killer uh, when they're listening to themselves on the radio, and of course, they're now residing in the where are they now file. That's just like a killer. Oh God, that that, that is <laughs> that is cute. one of the most effective like single sentence takedowns I've ever heard. Yeah, it's, 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 it's such a killer. Oh, I wanted to make the joke, uh, uh, Brian. I don't know if you're leaving my joke. Had I been invited uh, earlier and didn't have to sit there and watch you guys for an hour, I would have said uh, that uh, 
<laughs> had, had Bono, had you two played the Linux thing, the Linux people may have said, uh, instead of saying lemon, can you change it to Linux? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, I also would have. I also would have said to to Jerry. I, I saw Whip It on TV in 1981 when my family was on a cross Canada trip, and and it uh, basically changed my life. Anyway, well, I'll tell him. I'll tell him next time I see him. <laughs> God damn it! You know what? The, one other fucking fantastic joke is the song title "Tonight I'm Gonna Rock You Tonight." Oh, so with with the friends, <laughs> friends on um, just, tonight. It's just, amazing. <laughs> One of the funniest things of all time. It's a perfect song to start the uh, the show off with. This is like, uh, you know, uh, you know, cheap tricks. You know, having you know, hello there, hello, yeah. hello there, and good night. It's like it's it's a great start to the film. That song. Yeah, it's I I love that song for real. Like I, I mean, I would be maybe embarrassed saying that in front of Jerry, who'd be like making fun of it. All. I mean, he obviously <laughs> he, he realizes the genius of the movie, but like I actually, I mean, I also like Kiss. I wasn't going to tell him that either. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll say this uh we chickened out but an old band of mine learned it and we were going to play it on tour and we, we chickened out at the last minute i wish wish we hadn't yeah you should that's a great song uh the other thing i should say like i'm 53 this was their comeback tour i think christopher guest was 33 when they made this movie they were supposed to be like these old guys Right, which I'm is like 20, uh -huh. 20 years older than they are. 45 in December over here. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and you did mention that I was part of the Scott Pilgrim movie, and my, my job on the movie was um, to try to make the non musician actors look uh, believable because, you know, I can play a little bit of drums and guitar and bass. So I could sort of coach these kids, even though I some of them were not determined to do a good job. But all that aside, this Not movie. Alison Pill. Alison Pill was a gem. She was great. She was determined. Yeah. But um, but this movie is awesome. Part of why this movie works is because they are such. They're not only the funniest people in the world. They're like great players. Like uh, it could have been that they were that one of them was not very good, but they were all really great. And you know sometimes they're actually playing like at some of those sound checks and stuff. It really makes the movie that much cooler and believable. Well, and, and I wanted to talk about this about just how good the songs are because yeah. we were going back and forth internally uh, the, the 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 nucleus if you will of, of this show and just talking about like how catchy the songs are like how much they work as songs and every time i watch this movie all the songs get stuck in my head for multiple days yeah it has to like taper off <laughs> and, and it's that's you know like if you're doing a thing like this that's no mean feat and even like Okay, sure. So Christopher Guest is not like a shredder in the like Ingve Malmsteen sort of vein or, or whatever, right? But like yeah, boring anyway. Ingve Malmsteen's boring. Yeah, he, exactly. <laughs> Thousand notes per minute. And I don't give a shit about any of them. Don't care. But as, as someone that is very much like a functional, like the, the leads that I play are all very, you know, they 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 serve a purpose and like they they serve a melodic function within the song. Pretty good. They're all pretty good, like musicians. And that's why it works, I think. Yeah, I think I think the songs are great. Tonight I'm gonna to rock you. Tonight is my favorite. Like the movie sometimes necessarily becomes kind of cartoonish in the fact that you know they have sex farms and that kind of stuff. Like it becomes <laughs> it, you know, like the, sex farm. Well, that's where it becomes. It's not. I mean, I guess it's maybe believable. Some some bands have songs that stupid, but uh, you know, I think. You know, I think some bands like ACDC, um, I, I think ACDC, yeah. I guess, could be in this sort of, I think their songs are funny. Like, they're, they might be kind of like dum-dums who, you know, don't have a sophisticated sense of whatever, but like, but their records are kind of great. And, uh, but I also think the lyrics are really funny. I think they, I think they get the joke. Like, I know these guys are playing it like they don't get the joke and it sort of has to for the, for the comedy, but like, I think Sex Farm... You know, I don't love <laughs> sex. <laughs> oh, well, too bad, because here it comes. <laughs> but, but it, it's a, yeah, I agree. ACDC does, like, I don't ACDC love sex does like their thing, but they do it really well. Like they but, they have their niche and they stick with it and they. Yeah, but they they're, they're well. funny. Like they're funny. Like Bon Scott, the lyrics are really, really funny. Yeah. And even into the Brian Johnson era, I don't go that far. Like I sort of drop. I sort of don't know what's going on after like 1983 or whatever with them, but 
Um, I, I thought they were as sort of meat and potatoes as they are. I thought that they were actually quite quite funny. Okay, I want to. I don't know how much time we have, and I'm I'm kind of just spur, just like talking. No, 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 Chris. We, Wait, we, I have Chris. this. I have this uh, sex farm clip to play really fast. Oh, yeah. from okay, there. Go, go, go. From their uh, back to whatever, back to the Spinal Tap tour. Thing. I forget that this isn't a benevolent democracy. This is a crossover episode. So sorry, Chris. <laughs> go for it. Sex Farm. Well, Sex Farm obviously started as a, as a kind of an extended metaphor um, for farming and sexual activity. <laughs> it really do belong together when you think about it. Well, that's how you get more Is that how a metaphor works? Right. Animal husbandry. <laughs> and, and children as well. And wifery. That's right, yeah. 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 Um, a lot of people gross. didn't realize that we were doing a little country visit and passed a few sex farms, actual yeah. sex working, farms. Working, 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 working the sex, they don't have hard now. working sex farms. Family owned. Family working owned, family farm. run, family, uh, you Everything. know. Everything, yeah. That's where they get the expression, stupateria from. I've never never heard never that expression. Heard that. Never heard that. That's true. Well, that's where they got it, though, in yeah. case they ever hear it. They've got yeah. pigs and chickens and cows. All they're all doing it, always yeah. having sex and, and, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and milkmaids. Oh, yeah. less said the better, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. get to work. You hear that so, you know, you're early in the morning? Oh, no. What's that? It's the, duck. The, it's the female duck saying. Oh, no. No, no. How did you learn to speak duck? Well, you it's go very to, good. Go to a farm. It takes. There's not a trace minutes. of a human accent when you do it. No, it's no, interesting. It's great, yeah. yeah. But sex farm started out as a kind of a straight ahead hard rocker. You know, it was there. And it worked like that, and and oh, work like that. work always works great. Yeah. Kids love it, classic, you know, and classic, adults love it, and classic. deceased people even love it, yeah. Yeah. especially deceased people. Especially, They're yeah. Big well, fans. no complaints anyway. Yeah. But uh, we decided when it came time to go into the studio again, that we, we we'd give it another world and another style. Well, we've been doing it uh, live a bit like that. Yeah, that's right. Do you remember what we we gave it a go with? Uh, yeah, oh, the in, wolf. in wolf's sex time, sex. yeah, and it took all the sex. sex. Oh, oh, man. It's a hard love. It didn't yeah. work at all. No. But we knew we wanted to do something. Two Viennese. Yeah, we, Two knew, Viennese we wanted to do something really different. Yeah. And so we uh, we went a bit kind of funky with it. Yeah. We... One. <laughs> Working on a sex farm Trying to raise some hard love Getting out my bitch Poking your head So it's essentially the same tune Sung, sung by the same dude. Sung by the same guys. Yeah. And then we we'll do a rap section in there. Yeah. Two, three, and work on the sex farm trying to raise some hard love. Getting out of the broken your head. Hey, etc. Yeah. Goes on. Brit yeah. rap. Brit rap. Brit, Brit pop rap. Yeah, Brit we get rap. to do the uh Brit Brit percussion rap. parts. Yeah. I think it's fun to do that. Whoa. Get to do that. Have you ever tried to do it without your hands? You can't do it. Can't do it without your hands. No. It's all linear, organic, and eye mouth cord. Yeah. 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 Wow. Can I just say, by the way, a small, like, ignoble brag? Harry Shearer liked the show post today. Wow. That made me feel like I'm not wasting my time here. I I think it's I think it's so insane that um on The Simpsons when he was on it he did both uh Mr. Burns and Smithers. And Smithers, yeah, because, he's the assistant yeah. and the CEO. My, my, my uh, children were not they never I brought up uh, Wow Wow Wubsy. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But like I but every episode that's a <laughs> big Mr. Burns episode always is a big Smithers episode. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they yeah. so they, he has to do probably so much of that. And he's have you heard his Howard too. Stern? Have you heard his Howard Stern impersonation? <laughs> No, I haven't. It's astounding. He did it for like I think Saturday Night Live or something. Did he, you bring he, a clip, Conan? He did not bring a clip, Erica Stroud. Well, no. All right. Uh, yeah. Chris Murphy, <laughs> you have the floor. Go ahead. I, I've spoken already too much, but I've, I have one more story, which is the fact that ten years after the movie came out, um, 
Spinal Tap did like a promotional tour of Canada in one day. So on uh, <laughs> on on 19, <laughs> 1992 on Canada Day, don't everybody yell out, "What day is Canada Day again?" That's July right. 1st. What, July, very good. October, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I like apparently know this because of you know my, my weird fandom of Canadian rock. All right, that's right. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, everyone, look at the banner. Right, got that, and then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Man. What's going on? That, that, that's that's my banner work. Oh, it said, uh, "What the hell is Andy talking about?" And then, "Thanks, Andy." Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were making. I thought you were. See the way that my head is becomes the hair at the top there. Oh, it kind of does. Yeah, yeah it kind of got the Johnson head going I'll on. Not, on purpose. Great shot, that. I'll try not to. <laughs> I think I think I need the blonde on top though, since I have these All right. oh, crazy. All right. All right. too try. dark. Oh, yeah. try. Oh, okay. move it. You can Hold on. Okay. Oh, oh, there. there we go. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> you can, you can, you can, you can, you can uh, stay there, but I'm still, that. I'm still telling, I'm finishing my story. Yeah. yeah. Hear it. Story yeah. Second, <laughs> 10 years after, so 1992, they do this tour in a day. So they played in Newfoundland, they, St. John's Newfoundland in the morning. Then they play in Ontario in the middle of the day. And then they play in uh, Vancouver uh, in the evening. And they take the, the rotation of the earth uh, to help them out. But anyway, so so we played, Sloan played um, yes. with Spinal Tap at this show in Newfoundland. So I get to say, even though that this is a bullshit expression to say you shared the stage with someone, it usually means like you never met them and all that kind of stuff, which I didn't. I had no interaction with them. But I get to say is a feather in my cap that I shared the stage with, spin with actually with Spinal Tap. I don't think that many people can say that. And so, uh, and of course they came out. So this is in, I don't know if this joke will work, but I'll set it up try, to try to make it work. They come out in St. John's, Newfoundland. And of course the first thing Derek Small says is, hello, Nova Scotia. <laughs> 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 so that was pretty successful. And, and, uh, and we were young and stupid. We didn't even own our own gear at that point. And we just had rented gear and we rolled around on the stage and everybody booed, but we thought we were so cool. And, uh, but anyway, so that's kind of the end of the story. Uh, I don't really remember that much about seeing them. Patrick, I, I texted my band members to say, does anybody have any good stories so I can tell? And the only thing that they said is that we saw them without their wigs on, but I don't even remember that. <laughs> um, the and is other, it their real hair? It's, it is not. It is not. <laughs> what? My mind is blown. The other thing I was going to say about them, music, <laughs> that them musically is that it kind of, it works both ways in a like like the same way that a band like uh, maybe this is a too old a reference, but not for you guys. Uh, a band like uh, Urge Overkill or something, where they kind of yeah, yeah. like hipsters like them, but like dummy rockers like it too. They may not, you, you know what I mean? Like it kind of works either way. Like if you're just like a rocker, you'd be like, hey, these guys look pretty cool. But if you're a hipster, you're like, this guy, this is genius satire or whatever. Forrest <laughs> and Christina doesn't get that eric is on the cusp but the rest of us get it <laughs> right well they kind of became a parody of what they were starting out as themselves even like yeah. the urge overkill and then they put out yes. that career ending record uh what was it conan you know was it like oh uh, god it's i it's remember like, it's uh, i mean exit the dragon something coming up next week urge overkill uh, oh right, right, right. Oh, okay. No, no, that's. Well, they they that's looked they looked great. Like they yeah. did, they did. It, 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 yeah, exit exit the dragon. Right? Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, maybe. I uh, love career ending records, but which sounds like a Spinal Tap record, frankly. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's up there with you know Intravenous to Milo. <laughs> Shit sandwich. I mean shark Shit sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> How have we not talked about Erica Strout? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna feature you. <laughs> How have we not talked about Shark Sandwich? Can we can we can we talk a little bit about Shark Sandwich? Right. Yeah. Now? Yeah. What do you want to know about it? Is is that the best two word ender review of all time? Do you think? Um, I've never gotten a two word review. I don't remember it's, reading any either. So yes, I think it's the only one I know and, of. So yeah. by default, yeah. But I'm would, trying would any, to think of a better one. I can't think of anything that would be I funnier. Have, I've won, but it's clearly a reference to that review. Is like there was a band, like some like shitty kind of like guitar instituted technology band called GTR. Do you remember this band? G 
GTR, like guitar? No, no. like guitar. Oh, yeah. I've like, heard of them. I don't know why that sounds vaguely familiar, yeah. So maybe maybe you'll know where this joke is going. So their one word review uh, for GTR was just SHT. <laughs> uh, by the way, CD and Paula Wave uh, knocking off on the show to go to sleep to see Sloan tomorrow night. You're playing, uh, is that nice. the, are you playing Navy Blues? Is, is that we that are, one? yeah, we are. Well, no, are I didn't think GTR was, yeah. <laughs> are, are you giving me a plug? Yeah, we're playing, I am giving you a plug. We're yeah. playing in Toronto tomorrow. We're uh, playing all of our 1998. Record so uh, Brian, you better get up there and dance I, on the stage. I'll be I'll, I'll be there in the audience, just just through. Uh, has it been? Is it a good? Uh, what the, would that be? Do you have a hologram? You must. You're a technology guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can get it worked out. Be me in. Matter Astro Man thing, right? Yeah, you got holograms. Yeah, old tour that you want me on stage with Sloan. I could yeah. I could be like your Baz or like the mighty mighty Boston skanking guy or you yes. know you, you need. Oh, I think it's a COVID denier, by the way, not to get political. But. Oh, oh, really? Well, well, I'll wear a mask. I, yeah. I'm not a COVID denier, but you know no. what? Yeah, not, not Brian. The skanking guy from Mighty Mighty Boston is a COVID denier. Brian. Yes, yeah. he's you know, kind of, guy. I don't know his name. I don't care. He's got a big <laughs> voice too. He's got a big, big uh, Twitter following. I bet the one of, the, from, one of from, those. Uh, I'm sorry. One of those British magazines, like like Q or not, or one of those things, had uh, like the top 100 entertainers of the of the 20th century, and like Bez was in there at like number 55. <laughs> it's like right above like Frank Sinatra. Right. Right. <laughs> But like seriously, what if like okay, so you're at a bar, right? And and you're, and you're hanging out, you're talking to people. What do you do? Oh, <laughs> the guy that dances around. I dance around. Mondays. I give Sean Ryder drugs and dance That's around him. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I remember um, <laughs> one of my one of my friends who who was the original drummer for Maserati. He danced in a band for a while. Really? Was he a yeah. hype man? Um, Wait, who are you talking about? I, I hesitate to call him a hype man, but his name's Phil Horan. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the band now. Oh, I can't wait. can't believe that's ex escaping me. But yeah, he was a dancer. And I was like, we are like, he was a good dancer. He's a good dancer. But I'm like, you're wasting this man's talents because he's not the drummer. And I got to put my head back in here. Um, <laughs> he's not the drummer for your band. Right. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I'll just say I know I can't get it right. <laughs> just for, for for general, less less of a, a musician nerd thing. Like, what do you guys think of the sort of diminishing returns of the sort of uh, I know I know I guess we're not supposed to say mockumentary, but just for simplicity, the mockumentary, the sort of Spinal Tap, Guthman, Best in Show, Mighty Wind, like. Yeah, best in show I fuck with. Best in show I think is fantastic and amazing. And then Mighty Wind is a serious step down. And then like what for your consideration. I watched that finally this year. I thought it was, it was fun. I'm, I'm a Guffman guy. I love it. I I reference I reference waiting for Guffman or waiting for Godot. I'm, I'm a Guffman. I'm a, I vote for Guffman too. But I think I, I proposed doing the movie next extravaganza an episode of that. Yeah. I, I I know Brian was saying you know there were clearly there was like the Ruddles movie and and even even Hard Day's Night where it was right. almost mockumentary style. Um, before this but it really like like this section of the video store like mockumentary like like every all the tv like all the office and and like all that shit like it's hard to re remember like i'm so tired of that sort of talking heads thing but like this was really the sort of ground zero for that i know there were before but uh it's hard to remember how what how the, different this was it was so funny and just blew me away the language of this movie yeah it's, that's so done now overdone but it's you forget just how special this was when it came out you know yeah. there's a there's a film that's more spinal tap than spinal tap that i will say and it's my favorite um it's my favorite like rock making of a record documentary to watch steve albini calls this film uh, how not to make a record which is i, I know know what this is, is. some kind of monster uh, no, it's no, it's not some kind of monster. It it's the oh. one where they're making the black album called "A Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica," and it's like some kind of monster. Oh. Except they don't know not to just be complete over the top jackasses on a camera. The internet doesn't exist yet, and mm -hmm. it is mind blowingly good. And it's strange 
that that was the record they made for the black album just like the cover and spinal tap and it's and more spinal that. tap than the spinal tap movie even mm-hmm. yeah, it's like I, you like if you are a musician and you have not seen a year and a half in the life of metallica you have to watch it i can't believe i haven't seen that like i i <laughs> You I, need to watch it, Chris. And I love back. some kind of monster. I yeah, you know, I was saying earlier to Jerry Cassell's chagrin that people have become self-aware in the era since this, but Metallica has not. Like I, I haven't even no. seen that black album one, but the the some kind of monster was definitely the internet era, and they said the stupidest shit. Those guys are dumb. Right. This this has <laughs> like they're putting up, they show them like putting up porn pictures from like Hustler in the studio yeah, yeah, on yeah. the walls. Like it's right. that. Like as if they're being cool guys. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Yeah, but that's camera. also that's also. When's the last time when someone said no to them though? Right. Yeah. Well, not during Lu- <laughs> Lulu. <laughs> with the record with Lou Reed. Anyone? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what that is. That but... should have been a career ender. Oh man, yeah. like that. That is an astounding listen. Or, or was it My... Saint Anger? Was that other one that should be a career well, that's... ender? So I showed that to yeah. Kroger. Uh, cause they had a, uh, master, it was master puppets, but they replaced the snare sound with the bang, snare sound from St. Anger. Bang, bang. <laughs> and he had not heard Metallica recently. He didn't believe me that that's what he thought that was like, Oh, that's funny. He's like, no, have you heard St. Anger? He's like, no, I would have heard that. And like, uh, yeah, I played it for him. He's like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Cause that was, they spent like what? Three weeks getting that snare sound. That's the one they came away with. Yeah. That's a, uh, yeah, it's insane. Christina's really? loving this. Come button. on. How are you doing up there, Christina? You're on this show, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> Christina, you yep. look you look you look lovely tonight. Thank you so much for bringing your yep. your finest yep. crybaby shirt. How are you? I'm I'm great. Justice for Johnny Depp. My mom came in like two two minutes when the store was like, the internet's not working. I'm like, I'm live, I'm here. We can't we can't I'm do on this with right people now. from Sloan and Manor Asher, man. I'm busy, mom. I'm broadcasting here. Hulu's out. That's what the problem is. All the streaming services are out. So I sent an article to her. I'm like, this is what the problem is. It's not the internet. Go to bed. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> So there's something that uh, before I release this bizarre crossover episode back over to Forrest to do the bits that we do on the movie night show, uh, the the comment section, the comment section, everybody, not currently the president, but the comment section is screaming about the uh, the bread, the bread scene, like the deli bread. Yeah, the bread scene's great. <laughs> Gets upset about the Melba toast. Have, have you ever had one of those moments where you're like? All I wanted is a fucking Ritz cracker today, and they they give me this. <laughs> nope, this is what you have instead. So yeah, like I, the 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 panel is meant to uh, to to opine about that. Like seriously, there was a surprising amount of bread discourse in the comment section. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. That, uh, Nigel getting it's an iconic up- scene. Yeah, <laughs> it's an iconic scene. The well, small bread. <laughs> yeah, there are a whole bunch of scenes we didn't. We didn't systematically go through kind of the top ones, but uh, um, the bread scene, I mean, I personally, I like to think of myself as austere and I never want anything sure. and all I want is a bottle of water and get, like, give me cash instead. Like, and I don't spend my <laughs> money on some stupid shit, like I, whatever. That's just, that's a boring take, but, uh, but it's a beautiful scene. But a practical it's, it's one for touring band. Yes. It's a, it's a wonderful scene that, uh, that seems like it's kind of, they seem like they're kind of laughing and it's kind of made up on the spot. It's pretty awesome though. Yeah, why so, would you keep folding it? <laughs> <laughs> Early on with Men or Esterman, we had uh, these four very specific little Debbie cakes on our rider. And we were like, Chris, we, we, did, we were happy to get like a single piece of pizza to eat between all of us. But it would in the rider, it would say the show will not happen if these aren't there. <laughs> and we'd get so many of them that we'd end up throwing them out. And um, <laughs> this promoter in Philly, who's not with us anymore, a really amazing guy named Brian Dilworth, um, who used to put the Kyber Pass and all, all over Philly. Kyber, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all we over Philly. Gr- there. Great yeah. guy. Um, very first or second time we were coming through, they didn't have little debbies in philly they had tasty cakes Mm. tasty cakes and it was he was super stressed that we weren't going to play and called our agent (laughs) and was like can they use tasty cakes and i think we fought with him was like we're not gonna hey look this is not gonna work for our show with the tasty cake thing like we need the little debbies 
But um, of course we didn't care, but that was about the closest to that kind of moment that I've had. It's, it's like was, going to a fun. restaurant and they're like, I would like a Coke. And they're like, we have Pepsi and Sin. And you're like, right, right. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> do you guys know? That's the, how Erica is, by the way. She's totally like that. Kidding. Do you guys, do you guys, <laughs> do you guys know the, the Chuck Berry story where he would he'd request really specific amps like from the 50s that he couldn't get? Yep. <laughs> and then, but he would he would travel with the one that he wanted, but he would make them and they would like, they would say, here's a line of amps. They're, they're not what you asked for, but here's a whole bunch of them. He's like, uh, none of those are going to work. I'll tell you what, I brought the one that, that I wanted you to get me and I can rent it to you guys. Anyway. Well, wow. the, the whole, <laughs> yes. the whole Van Halen thing, David Lee Ross said was to make sure somebody had read the writer. And right. I think that there's actually a validity to that. I think that's, that's the Brown that's M&M thing, thing, right? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Just and burying I, it in the technical writer or whatever. I, I don't know. Did anybody else see uh, that that show, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll? Yeah, on uh, FX Dennis or whatever. Barry. Yeah, yeah. They had one episode where um, it's more of a uh, lifestyle apparently that the show, band yeah. uh, that Dennis Leary <laughs> was in had one hit in like Switzerland or something, and they they had to fly out and do this big show. And so they decided to have this insane writer with all these different things, and uh, he ends up taking acid before the show, and the snake gets loose. Uh, that he asked for in the water. <laughs> Clearly, as, as one does, yeah. Well, yeah, let's remember that if that, you have that was the a strange sex show. and the drugs, was, you don't need the rock and roll. Yeah. That's okay. yeah. That was, uh, uh, the rock and rolls. I pretty much only concentrate on the rock and rolls. That's my problem. Are we getting the letterbox? <laughs> yeah. Let's do the letterbox one liners. Conan. Andy, did you have did you have anything else to that story? Was no, it no, it was just, you know, um, but but the thing is is that like the fun thing about the episode is um Dennis Leary's character is like this autistic person when it comes to rock and roll fact history. Mm-hmm. And, and so like, he's always talking about everybody else's writer. Um, and they, they wanted to make like the most extreme writer of all time. Um, so, so it was, it's kind of fun if you, if you like that kind of trivia. I would like to see that. All right. Sounds good. So here we are folks. Here we are. It is time once again for the, the most famous of famous bits, which is the, the letterbox one liners letterbox, of course, a open source democracy where everybody, not just your Siskels, not just your Eberts get to have their say about a film, whether that's films, they love films that they didn't love films that they were baffled by films that they are strangely horny for all of these things (laughs) are put together most eloquently for the purposes of this show, at least, as a one-line review, a one-liner, if you will, a one-liner. People work in their tight five, right? Uh, and that is what the bit is. These are letterbox one-liners for this is Spinal Tap. Forest, let it rip. Drummers be like. Thank you, Jesus stars. Metaphorically and literally on that one. Brian, thoughts? <laughs> You know, a lot of people uh, spontaneously combust every year. You just don't, they don't, you know, they don't cover it. You know, they don't hear about it. It's not widely publicized, I agree. I think Rogan, though, was talking about it. So, you know, good for him. (laughs) Every single one of these guys, by the way, would be on, would have gone on Joe Rogan if they were real care, like if they were real rock stars. Like that's where Spinal Tap would be. be I'm sure they would have. (laughs) <laughs> well, the whole line of like, I read, uh, I, I believe everything I read, it just totally sounds like a, a Rogan thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Brian, I, I, regular guys. Brian, I, no, no, no. Go back. Go back. Go back. You're going no, I, I, I was going to say, I just like that in this scene, uh, Christopher Guest uses the word globule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's just yeah, after the drummer has uh, spontaneously kibasi. It's like, yeah, there was yeah. a little green go- globule. <laughs> uh, Chris Murphy. Sometimes you were a drummer as well, therefore you were allowed to opine on this. On the exploding drummers, yes, uh, that's one of the areas where I thought that the that the movie became less realistic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, spontaneous combustion is a thing that happens regularly. And people are we've not. that's that's rhythm guitar players in our band. I think we've had eight. Oh, or something a lot, too many. Maybe this doesn't. Maybe this is the wrong time to ask. But is there a movie that you guys can quote more lines from than this movie? Monty Python Oof. and the Holy Grail. Uh, Goodfellas. Mm. Good, Goodfellas. This is a close yeah. second. Me too. Goodfellas. Yeah. Army of Darkness. Good. I hated Goodfellas. What? <laughs> Who hated that? That's Erica Stroud. Who said maybe that? I need to revisit. I don't know. It's just upsetting. It's just upsetting. Oh, the greatest, <laughs> greatest. Who the, who the hell do you think you are? Frankie Valley or some kind of big shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Frankie Valley. 
<laughs> All right, I'll watch it again. Go over right. get the shine box. <laughs> Keep them here. Yeah, everyone, everyone loves Goodfellas. All right, now I'll, probably, I'll probably watch it again just because it got invoked. I've seen it later. <laughs> Goodfellas were invoked, plus five experience. Wish I had a mini Stonehenge. <laughs> oh, I bet you could find a tutorial on YouTube of how to build one. There's a yeah. tutorial for everything. Mm -hmm. Tutorial. You just need some like styrofoam and and uh, exacto blade and some paint. See, Andrew World has already done one. W Waluigi watches is the name of this user, by the way. Five stars. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, by the way, Brian, I saw like I said, as I mentioned, I saw the Eviac tour, and I, mm -hmm. what if the Eviac was like twelve inches tall? How, how would you have reacted? That would have been better because we got so just to like for those in this visual medium here being that like you can't see the eviac we, we made these like nine we had watched this you know tour documentary film called rust never sleeps by neil young where he has these giant fender amps like giant and these jawas come out it's like let's make these uh super computers and put our amps in the middle and samplers on top and storage in the bottom and they'll have like reel-to-reel -reel tapes that are moving and flashing lights but they were so goddamn heavy to carry around that we got sick of it at the end of this tour we played y2k like <laughs> new year's eve at the middle east in boston and like it's still not remembered as a very yeah i think it's still kind of uh infamous i was about to say legendary but infamous is a better word and we're like you know what we're gonna do we're gonna blow those motherfuckers up at the end of the show nice but we went like you know just to reiterate we're from fucking alabama so we're not we had all public education here in the state of alabama so we're just throwing like fireworks and like you know lighter fluid and everything in these things in the middle east i'm sure chris has played there before it's got a very low ceiling and upstairs or downstairs downstairs yeah. and uh it's a tight little room and then we blew it up and it smoked out the whole place and i realized that it had gone wrong when i saw people like throwing up on the bar there was so much smoke in the room and i i think that's the I think that's the only night we've lost seventeen thousand dollars in one show or oh something like that it was not it was not good it was yeah it was not a good night but i would have preferred to have small ones and they would have been <laughs> yeah, in that scenario rid of. the small ones would have been an attribute sure. <laughs> all right what's next <laughs> It makes me furious that he keeps folding it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching with that. Well, it made him furious that he, he had it, to keep folding just... the the meat. You know, <laughs> it was such a... mad. Well, but all right. Th there's a moment in tour where you just like you fixate on a thing, right? And like, yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. I it's thought that not was a really beautiful what you're upset thing. about. But yeah, it's what's exactly. chapping your ass in the moment. <laughs> Exactly. And then you make a big deal of it. And later on, you're like, I don't know why I was so upset about that bread, but I really was furious about it. <laughs> it's also, <laughs> sh no, it, it underlines, the, I think, the shittiness of the, the, the gigs that they're playing, right? Like they're playing at colleges, they're playing, like they used to be going to these huge uh, amphitheaters, and now they're just kind of playing at these colleges to like a small audience. Like yeah, it definitely it, does a good job in like underlining how, uh, inappropriately placed they feel like they are well also like like the important thing about a charcuterie board is that you know you have to have <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible sentence right yeah. can't wait, to hear, can't wait to hear what happens next that, that the breads and the meats uh, you know everything's about the same size so they're just stackable <laughs> this is charcuterie 101 so it's a mind fuck when you have different sizes of things like how does that how does that work uh, Erica Mindfuck Strout for uh, some dropping some knowledge on you. You know, Conan, <laughs> I, I think you really hit on what it is about that scene, though. And uh, I own a music venue here in Birmingham, and I see these great, stupid band fights all the time, just kind of being behind the scenes. And I have to be around. And um, the fight or the thing is never about the thing. It's about never these about other the layers of like... Yes. You and I have been friends since we were in high school and I'm sick of seeing you. We've been overexposed to each other. We've been riding around a van for a year and a half. And I hate but your But the girlfriend. fight will be about <laughs> something about like, oh, you use my vape or something. And it'll be this huge argument. And they're kind of great when you're not in the band to watch <laughs> right, a band it's fight. Not, it's not you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
as a target or the uh, the uh, aggressor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guest having to be helped up after his guitar solo is the funniest thing in the history of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> they did that really well too, where he had to like spin him around a bit. And, like, <laughs> but the thing is, he never he's never stops playing. That's the key, and that no. that's what that's what. Even though you can't, yeah, you can't, you can't. You just have it's to have right to uh, help you up. It happens yeah. to us all the time. Mm-hmm. He doesn't. He also doesn't ask for the help or whatever. The person just comes and, and lifts him back up, and it's like it's clear that maybe this is not a little the head thing. Happened. Though doesn't he do a little head like come like, get over here? <laughs> but it's clear oh, that like nod. maybe something similar to this has happened before. This is what I like about it. Oh, yeah. I assumed it His happens like once ready. a show. Like, <laughs> They ever happen to you? Chris, ever happen to you? Can you guys see each other? No. 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 Yeah. Let's find this weird now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that's not happened to me. But like, I just like, there's so many fun, like the whole the detail where he's like doing the stupid guitar solo and kicking the, you know, tuning it in the middle and kicking, kicking the violin or like all that stupid <laughs> shit. It's like, there's so many things packed into every scene. It's like it's yeah. like it's like every scene has so much stuff in it. It's almost like it could have used more boring scenes because every it's like listening to Nevermind or something. It's like every every song is like this is hit. They should have like str- they should have spread that out over ten albums or something. It's like it's almost too much to take in. I agree. 90, 90 plus minutes too. Crazy. I like it. I like that every scene is a fucking hit. Of course I do too. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Next. Dozens of people spontaneously combust every year. <laughs> Dozens. Is that true? Is that is that like is that on Snopes? How many people actually spontaneously combust? There's no way that's true. As like one a year though? This gotta be like one a year. Right? Now. No, not even. <laughs> One a decade. We're discussing it is is. Oh, yeah. What about the photo of that guy on the Pink Floyd album? Maybe I, not. I, I, maybe I not in Canada. People spot and it said, "Do people spontaneously combust?" So let's see. Is there ever been proven or disproven? God damn it! Excuse <laughs> us while we Google this. <laughs> <laughs> damn it! <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll we'll get our top fact it's checker. Time for That's what I do. <laughs> Famous for its sustain. Yeah, I love I love that line where he's like uh, he's like you'd still hear it if it was playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god! I don't I, hear anything. I forgot I forgot the, the my favorite line that we say all the time, the greatest line of the movie, kind of subtle line is like they were still boo- they were still booing him when we were on. <laughs> the, the Duke fame, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, that's so good. I I don't I forget if that is that the right wording. It's like basically. Do, am I illustrating the joke by saying that? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, and, and, and uh, okay. So yeah. Fam- no, no, it's fine. Go ahead. It, it, right. By the way, I like sustain. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, I think the problem may have been that there was a Stonehenge monument on stage in danger of being crushed by his wharf. Yeah. <laughs> Good, you know, stated. Good thing it, it's just styrofoam. It took me. It took me until watching it this time to really register the fact though, that there was the two uh, dwarves like on stage, dressed up next to the Stonehenge <laughs> monument. I always missed that part. Wait, you missed it. that? How did you miss that? Dancing. I don't know. They're like, short. He looks so it. above them. It it it's a quick like it's a very quick moment of time in the movie. So oh, they it's... no, and they bump into each other. That's the funniest part. They... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, their dance is not super coordinated. Yeah. Also, not. how would that have worked if that thing was actually 18 feet tall? That would have been insane looking. Yes. That would have been just what, as insane. What's you Black know, Sabbath small actually did. Would look, <laughs> well, they did that on one of their tours. They had one that was like way too large. But it, yeah, it was after this came out. But Black Sabbath got one that was too large for the venues that they were playing. And right. then also they had a they had a dwarf little person. What do we call them? I don't know. Uh, that was dressed up like a demon. They would crawl around on top of it. I'm not sure this is terrible. I shouldn't be laughing. He fell off. He fell off of it. And it was pretty high up. And I guess he got hurt. Oh, my God. Oh, that's terrible. But that happened like this. This is it like, sounds like what, a funny spectacle of him crawling around on it, though. Yeah, it, it's sort of like. But that wasn't inspired by this. That tour had already yeah. started when this movie came out. And this is 80s Black Sabbath, to be clear. In case somebody yeah. thought this was cool. This was not cool. This was 80s <laughs> Black Sabbath. 
<laughs> are we are we all clear on that? Does, I want to make that explicitly clear. I, I just want to point out that Conan was kind of getting a little uh, wolf on Wall Street with little people on that. Just <laughs> I, I just want to call you out. Mm. <laughs> Watch your step. Next. Slide. Camera angle. Bulls first. Yes. <laughs> the cucumber. I mean, I, I think they could have even gone a little bit like I think they could have padded more. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. All right. I mean, they weren't like Bowie and uh, Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> they could have been. They could have been. I, I mean, that's like the gold standard. Of <laughs> that is the gold standard of, of bowls. You're, you're right. You're not yeah. wrong. Anyway. <laughs> You're not wrong. I do like though. Uh, what's the line? He says something. He he makes a weird uh thing about like how it's like an aardvark or something in his armadillo. In his, oh, armadillo. Yeah. Armadillo. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Please, sir, armadillo. Yeah. That's a deleted scene. That's a deep cut. That's what? In the armadillo. No. He's oh, is it in the, in the movie? movie? Yeah. Yeah. Movie. There may be some deleted scene where he talks about it too, but it's right. definitely in. So what, what? Why does he? I, 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 there again, public education, in Alabama. Why does he put uh, aluminum foil around it just to keep it from being cold on his leg, or what? Because of the condensation. Know? I don't know. <laughs> I would just. I mean, you know, there again, I, I would just put the cucumber in and not worry about the tin foil. Christina, can yeah, you open? If up... You're going through a metal detector. Christina, can you open up an incognito window and search for that, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never kept a vegetable in my pants, so I can't speak to it. The weird uh, thing is there's got to be a precedent for that. This got to be pulled from some yeah. story or hearsay exactly. or something. Rod Stewart or something, yeah. I mean, it might just yeah. be so that the metal detector goes off, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, to... Yeah, it's a device. <laughs> I mean, men wearing tight pants like that was like, I mean, through the 70s and into the 80s. Like, that was that was a thing. So, like, it makes sense to me, even if it wasn't pulled from a real life thing, although it easily could have been. Exactly. Kip Winger is the one I'm thinking of. That's got the. As I often do. Right. Right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> you can't really dust for vomit. That's a good line. <laughs> Who's vomit was it? No. If that was a, if that was a first time ad lib, that's as good. Yeah. Gets. Yeah. He's he's laughing. They're laughing. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That, nothing more needs to be. No commentary for that one. This, who all? Who yeah. all? Who all actually like died? Like Bon Scott, Hendrix, uh, uh, Hendrix, Janice, yeah. Janice Joplin, right? Janis Joplin, right? Mama oh, Cass, Bonham, Mama John Cass. Bonham, yes. John Bonham, yes. Bonham. Yes. Bonham. Yes. Jim Morrison, Bonham, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of Bonham. death by vomit. Those are all older folks too. Like I wonder what's. Uh, well, a lot of times it has to do with. It's like quicksand. It's not really a thing anymore. A lot of times that's to do with the barbiturates. They would take barbiturates and they would drink and it would depress yeah. their nervous system so yeah, they couldn't yeah. wake up. And then when right. they threw up, they couldn't wake up to, um, yeah, to, to, to save To not them. choke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people do that shit now, I bet. I bet you're right. Yeah, but, um, I mean, people do that. People do that with, uh, like, Oxycontin and stuff like that, but because people throw up from that. But it's like, it was a specific problem, I think, with the barbiturates that, like, people used to be prescribed uh, gotcha yeah. okay i'll allow it i think even like <laughs> Judy garland died from something like that too and like a bunch of celebrities did that's the only reason why i know about it <laughs> judge erica Strout. poor judy <laughs> mm. brian johnson was going to replace judy garland in the wizard of oz if she was. <laughs> <laughs> listen to rock and roll tidbit yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, next. May I start by saying how thrilled we are to have you here? We're such fans of your music and all of your records. I'm not speaking of yours, personally. It's a whole genre of rock and roll. Yeah. Classic Fred Willard. Ah, what a king, man! Like what a like like best in show too. Just he just it, every every oh. millisecond he's on screen is astounding. Yeah. Stargate like SG One. I feel like um, Jason Bateman in Dodgeball was just like doing his damn best to do a Fred yeah. Willard impersonation. <laughs> and and uh, and good on him for attempting, but nobody can touch the game. Yeah, I mean, Jason Bateman's likable, but yeah, Fred Willard was. Jason Bateman's great. Fred, yeah, Fred Willard. What a what a shame! Like, what a genius! Like what he had he was how long was he on screen? He had. He had the. I, I'm getting a little shaggy up there. People are gonna mix us. Think I'm in the band. Have you heard of? Four yeah, it's Jackson? literally two minutes. Uh, he, he disappears from the thing. I think. 
Um, once he says the thing where he's like, uh, oh, play something that I can dance to, which you know that they're about to play something that everyone <laughs> is going to find absolutely abhorrent. <laughs> and lo and behold, it is. He was, and, uh, he, and then, he was a and that, I think the only reason why the, the Sex Farm song works at all is because they're playing it at that place. You know what I mean? Like where it's right. 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 Exactly. Right. 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 <laughs> not the ideal audience, we'll just charitably say. Yeah. I feel like what? so many movies have ripped that bit off, too. There but they're inferior. I mean, it's the setup. Oh, by the way, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the setup on that is so astounding. Like the setup yeah. and the payoff is fantastic. It's uh, it's very also. Um, I feel like Sasha Baron Cohen like ripped that bit off so many times, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. did it with an actual audience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, more, more balls, perhaps. But yeah. <laughs> I watched um, Space Force recently, and Fred Willard playing. I think it's Steve Carell's dad. Oh. In that, like okay. he. Even just being, the, I mean, you can tell he's very, he's very old. He's, you can tell he's kind of frail, even though he's acting anyway. But like, well, he made he, it to like ninety, right? Just like, yeah. I mean, it was still fucking hysterical. Last one. Eleven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So nice. <laughs> this was like, um, and I only thought about this when I watched it to to refresh for this episode, but. What do you think about like those moments when you're at a show and you're talking with somebody and you very suddenly realize that they have no idea how gear works? Right, right, yeah, 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 totally. Especially when they're like, like well-known musicians, it's very shocking. I was I was showing somebody how to use a, a like a wireless mic one time, and they looked at the bottom of the mic before the PA was on and said, "Where did the sound come out?" Oh, like <laughs> it comes out of the best. Like it's not a megaphone. <laughs> Ooh. So yeah. yeah, I've been there for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. But the the whole this one goes to eleven, or the the concept of 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 eleven being more than the top, like that's right. Oh, these ones go to eleven. One louder, right? But, but these make ten <laughs> louder. Well, these right. ones go to eleven. Well, the, the the sorry, the scene itself is great, but it's just like it's in the lexicon. Like that is everybody yeah. knows. Everybody knows that reference. <laughs> like my kids know what that is. Right. Exactly. Um, it's it, it's in the miasma of uh, of popular culture and humanity. I don't know if anything more than that uh, is more in, in the lexicon from the movie. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? That's got to be it. I mean, even that, that is it. That, that that's the first thing I ever heard. I, I felt guilty about saying that this show has now gone to eleven when I announced you being on the show, Chris Murphy. Well, but, it, that, <laughs> because you were incorrect. But I saved my powder for that. It's an it's a it's what, you know it's used often so. When I was a kid and saw that, I was like, yeah, I didn't understand the, the whole concept of relative decibels and volume. And I was like, yeah, it would be a louder at 11. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, you know, I, and I play with a loud. I, Chris, I don't know if you've ever done this to a sound guy, but I always think it's really funny. When guitar players go the opposite way. And I'm like, my amp's only on two. <laughs> and I'm like, what is two? Oh, what is yeah. two to you? And then you go over and like mime turning it down, but don't oh yeah, the knob. <laughs> right, right, that's yeah. what I was thinking about. The, cool, the turn, down. turn down. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me turn that down for you. Oh, Play yeah. a little softer totally. during sound check, and then yeah. when the show. Oh, I happens. never offer. Never offer to turn down. No. Only if they ask, and then I'll fake it. Yep. Right. right. Yeah. Um. Hold still, till the sound check's over. So there you go. Those are the uh, right. That's it. Right, Forrest. That, that's it. yeah. Okay, that, those are the those are the letterbox one liners for this is Spinal Tap, the incredible protonic reversal, moving extravaganza crossover episode. Thank you, Yay. people giving me free content for that bit. Uh, you can follow the show, uh, moving extravaganza on letterbox. That's force metal over there, like through Erica over on that side. Oh, <laughs> that way, <laughs> kind of mirrored. <laughs> uh, and of course, Erica, Erica Strout, Stratocaster, she's on uh, letterbox as well. Uh, J Andy World. For this way, I really do feel like we're in Hollywood Squares right now. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's on Letterbox. I'm Gilbert he's... Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. to a legend. By the way, yes. uh, uh, Jay Andrew World's on there. He watches a lot of weird shit. Yeah, I, very oh, weird shit. No, I I know. That's why I said it. I didn't see that late. Uh, Christina, you're on there now. I'm Christina, just like everything else, right? If I yep. Correctly. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I of course. I'm Conan Neutron, and I, I'm all over that th that thing. Uh, Chris Murphy, Brian Teasley. I'm not sure if either of you guys are on there, but if you like movies, that's a that's a place that's on. So, uh, 
Good yeah. to every giant yep. death movie now. Thank uh, you. For, thanks for having us on, Conan. We're not quite done yet. Uh, oh. Jandy World, do the plugs, and then we're going to do final thoughts, and we'll be uh, and we'll all move on with our lives. Okay. All right. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching us. If you are uh, on uh, Twitch, please subscribe if you can. That's great. If you have an Amazon Prime account, the amazing thing about that is you can subscribe to us for free, and that really does help us out. If you're watching us over on YouTube, do the YouTube things. Hit the bell. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Uh, and um, comment too, you know. Uh, also, this is a big ask, I know, but you got that great tune at the end. Play the video to the end so other movie fans can find this uh, content. We also have a um, uh, Patreon where you can come and give us more money and you can get extra stuff like access to all of our post game or all of our after parties, which um, I think we're going to be having one tonight, I understand. Yeah. Is that the rumor I heard? Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I've been drawing all day. So, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jandy World, thank you. Also, I, I appreciate the fact that so many Protonic Reversal fans finally watched this show uh, or, or <laughs> crossover. So uh, thank you, Chris and Brian, for shanghaiing uh, my crowd into, uh, and, and also Jerry Casali uh, for this show because I think people should uh, watch Movie Next Show again. So it's a good show. I mean, I'm biased. I'm on it, of course, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, Forrest, you actually host that show, so why don't you talk for a while? Finally. Uh, wait, you say what? <laughs> I, I would I would say like introduce the final thoughts and then we can oh yeah oh I yeah. thought I, I, Sorry, didn't know. I, I know I know you were just like no you talk <laughs> um, I mean just say some stuff man. I do it <laughs> just vamp just vamp. I know. That's all I right and it's very <laughs> clear yeah. all right no yeah let's uh let's Thanks. jump to final thoughts and I'll start with uh Chris because he was the last one to come on um yeah so just final thoughts anything we didn't get to or any any uh yeah Oh, I, have, I, have another, I have another musician friend, and when, when we refer to our wives, we talk about uh, what does your Janine think of this? Think of this. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if that ends up, I, I end up sounding like a sexist asshole, but anyway, uh, Janine is a great character. She's hilarious. She is, and also in V. She was, in, she was uh, the lead in V, if I remember right, right? Which, v, like the TV movie? Wait a minute. Robert, yeah. uh, I think Robert so, Hill actually. was in V, right? Mm hmm I'm not talking about the, the remake with uh, Marina background. I'm talking about the original one. Yeah, in, in the uh, 80s. Yeah, yeah. All right. The final Five battle. <laughs> you have 13 <laughs> days to prepare for V. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Uh, that was that's the end of my thing. Uh, this movie is basically my favorite comedy of all time. Uh, I don't know if it would, if it's universally everybody's favorite. Com I mean, all of us are kind of music. Uh, involved and I don't know if that's why I love it as much as I do. I loved it when I was a kid, even before I. It had the sort of sensibility of SCTV and and satire and all that kind of stuff. And just just quickly, the other thing is like I know um, Jerry was kind of like uh, chirping on Al, uh, Weird Al for making fun of Devo or something. It's like I I think Weird Al is brilliant, and I think D Devo's brilliant, but Devo is already a, like a satirical band. You can't really. Satire is satire. It doesn't really make sense, but I think that I, I think Weird Al gets a pass. I think he's great. Uh, but um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I, I loved it, it since I was it a kid. It just made me. I'm saying that made me think of. Uh, there's a video that I play on here every once in a while where it's a this guy. Now he's on SNL that is pretending to be Donald Trump, and he's talking about Weird Al, and he's like, he didn't ask for the rights. Weird he Al. For... <laughs> yeah. He's on SNL now. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, like, I also. If I ever meet if I ever meet at Weird Al, I have a good idea for him, and I'll tell you. If you meet him, you can tell him my idea because it's he can have it. It's the idea of doing uh, Pocket Dial Rock, the uh, huh? Elton John song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I, I think he should do a, a whole a record of oldies, and including Pocket Dial Rock. There you go. Anyway, I want to see it. Thanks for having me on. Good stuff. It's, it's great to have you back on, Chris. Uh, Referencing Dare to be Stupid, maybe my only misstep I've ever done with Gerald Casale. So, like, I'll, I'll hold that in my heart for forever. That, like, I was like, he was mad. He was not pleased about from, that. From, from what I overheard, because I, I wasn't to allowed again. to interact with him. <laughs> All that goodwill has now been just lit on fire. But anyway, you not really. Like you just had to get Mark Mothers one on. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> he liked Dare to be Stupid. I was gonna. I was gonna say the Nigel versus uh, Derek uh, 
Devo, whatever. We, you know, like his connection was garbage. His internet line got cut before being whatever. Nobody cares. Let's talk about in the post game. Uh, Forrest, you host the yeah. Um, Brian, you got some final thought for us? Uh, yeah. You know, I much like Chris, I think Spinal Tap's the greatest. You know, uh, if not only greatest, like fake rockumentary or whatever but it's one of the greatest examples of a full length uh completely improvised movie um and the caliber of uh talent and training that it takes to do it is is just unstoppable on another note i think i have earned on this podcast that if i ever get a terminal illness like it gets really bad that chris owes me a chance to skank on stage with Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever kind of American embassy in Toronto, like make a wish kind of thing. I have whatever I have to go through. I'll go through whatever <laughs> channels. Well, you you live so far south that uh, I'm buddies with Steve Page, who is in the Bare Naked Ladies. And he's, sure. his thing about being a Canadian band is like you, you put a whole bunch of uh, money in a suitcase on the roof of your car and you open the suitcase when you're at the border and you just and you drive. <laughs> <laughs> and it just flies. You can never get. You can never get to the very. You can't get to Alabama. All the money's. Oh, I'll come to you. Don't worry. Well, you don't have to be terminally ill. You can. You can skank regardless. Well, that's great. That's yeah. that's even easier. <laughs> that goes for everybody. No one has to be terminally ill to skank. Skank freedom. Up. Skank freedom. <laughs> well, now I don't feel special if you're just going to let everybody skank on stage. Right. Well, sorry. Everybody has on to be skank farm. Skank farm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> well, we'll try and come up with this one of our. We, I don't think we have any upstrokes in any of our songs, but we'll try and figure one out. Much appreciated, Conan. Congratulations on eight years too. Thanks, man. Thanks hey. you guys for doing this. This is this, great this, work, this, Conan. I know. I'm, I'm surprised as anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say I was surprised though. Yeah. yeah well. Thank you. It's it's oh, we'll, you. We'll, have a, we'll have a drink to celebrate on the after party. Exactly. You you yeah, thought it was yeah. loose before. Well, watch out, y'all. <laughs> All right, we got 17 more people to go through. Let's go for it. <laughs> All right, Erica, you got some final thoughts. I do, yeah. Um the first one is that uh I've been a fan of Eraserata for a long time, but I only recently thought about how Devo like they are, and I I was wondering if that would be something that I could come up with when uh, Jerry was on, but it's fine. So anyway, that's my thought on that. Um, and then um, something in the notes that Forrest, I think you put together, or I don't know who put them together, but in the, the Google Doc or whatever, the notes, there was something yeah, about Conan, feminism Conan, in there. There are notes for this show, by the way, Brian and Chris. This is not just ephemeral <laughs> in my gossip. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah. it was the first time I got the notes. <laughs> yeah, we don't give them to you. <laughs> Um, we barely there get was the something image. referring to like the Yoko Ono ism of, of the movie yeah. and like the feminist aspect. And, um, I, I had never really thought about it when I watched the film before, because it's just, it's such a likable, hilarious film. And I don't, I don't fault it really on these points, but I do feel like I noticed the stuff with that, with that frame of, in mind. Yeah. Um, at the, at the time, I don't think I would have expected them to to think about this aspect of it or like bring these points in. But like, while well, Janine, I agree, she does a great job as the as the really annoying girlfriend who tries to like weasel her way in to like I, I'm managing the band or whatever she's, you know, whatever her end game is there. But um, I do feel like they don't really like talk about or touch on or or demonstrate the problems with the whole Yoko Ono like persona and like stereotype um which was you know i mean from what i understand like pretty much completely fabricated um and i wish we so. had more of a chance to talk about it that wasn't just the final thoughts but there's... yeah yeah no i don't want to get i don't want to like derail us okay. but well i, I, I don't like I, I wish that be... you didn't have to like use your final thoughts to mention that because yeah i want yeah, yeah whatever it's 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 chill well, outside of that, I let me interrupt the woman about this. Yeah, great. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why don't you explain it, Conan? Uh, <laughs> well, what Erica means to say is, I mean, there, um, there's a running, yeah, but... there's a running joke though throughout the whole thing, and he says at the end, right? Like, I believe everything I read, uh, you know, and that that's Google. a running joke, and it seems like mm -hmm. he says, I wrote it down, but he says something like, um, and I don't think that I'm not 
defending the way that they did this, but um, he says, uh, before I met Janine, my life was cosmically in shambles. I was kind of using bits of whatever Eastern philosophy and Janine kind of sorted out for me, gave me a path. So I think they're trying to, um, they're trying to show that he's like someone who's just unable to think for himself and he is completely uh, dependent on her to do that for him. And obviously that's like a co uh, codependent relationship, but he also makes the, the comment that she's a lot like Nigel, like, you know, like Nigel's almost like his uh, band wife, I guess. And, and Janine is his girlfriend. Like, so yeah. kind of, the, I, I wish they had touched on that more, but I do think that they were trying to build something with that. Yeah. Um, that makes I, I, sense. I, I, yeah. 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 And I honestly, like as a fan of the movie, I don't really want anything to change, but it's it astounding it how it. succinct they kept it. Right. I yeah. mean, like, it's like, it's astounding. Yeah. Yeah. Six, 60 hours of footage. Beloved. Was it 60 hours? 90. 60 <sighs> hours of footage. They cut down they to, cut 90, down to minutes. 90 minutes. Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> Eric added. She knows. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. That's, a that's lot. about what I sent you for the dark passengers video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to bring that up, but um, <laughs> now that now the world is coming. Was was that it? Sorry, we like seventeen dudes talked over you the entire time, but yeah. <laughs> I'm resisting the urge to say that's okay. I'm used to it, but uh, no, just that. I mean, it's it's a really beloved film, and um, I I I think it's like kind of like Princess Bride too, which I know has some overlap um, based on like the people who made it and some of the some of the actors and everything, but. It's just like it. It just seems like this perfect moment where like these people came together and just it, everything gelled and the synergy of of their creative energy all together was just like kind of magical. So true. I love it. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Boris <laughs> is checking his Twitter right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, Christina, you got some final thoughts to add to the mix? I wish Final Tap was a real band. That's it. All right. <laughs> wait, wait, they're not? <laughs> that was the, actually one of the things when I was doing, re like, looking back on, like, research in the film. It was like a lot of people were confused and thought they were a real band. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, it's the husband of Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, they have me fooled. But did they? Did they not? Did they not play Wembley, or did they not? Did they? They, I mean, the, the tour they, they that I did I'm... play. They they went out and like were a band too. Like yeah. after the movie. Yeah, it sounds like they did do some of that. Yeah. 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 And did they make a second record? I don't know. Can we get our fact checkers on that? Uh, I don't know. IRL. Like, I don't know. They're, they're a bit like that. That uh, Mickey. Uh, uh, to Owen's line about like how the be uh, how the how the monkeys are like um you know a, a fake band that became real and and it's like when if it's Bach became a real Vulcan um mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, I, I just imagine yeah another funny thing they did was like I, I don't know if it was like for an anniversary or like when the DVD came out or something they they the joke was they were putting out a, a commemorative calendar but they did a, it was a colander <laughs> like a memory of colander. And they're like, no, they just spelt it wrong. Really. I love it. I love it so much. All right. Um, <laughs> Conan. Get people to go. No, uh, wait, did Brian go? Brian's going. Wait, I'm going before yeah, Brian. Brian went. I did. We're, we're, we're to oh, you. Shit. And then there's like 20 more yeah. people to get final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Only 20. We're so close. The comment section. Uh, look, this is, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. When I thought of the kind of movie they wanted to do, the so far first and only crossover between my show, Conan Protocol and Move Next Extravaganza, this was such a clear, far and away top shelf pick. And I'm overjoyed that some people that like listen and watch this show have checked out the other show now uh, almost force fed it if you will uh, and I'm doubly overjoyed that uh, Brian and Chris and Jerry uh, humored me in my weird hey it's been eight years of doing this show 
let's do something completely different, also objectively insane. Uh, very Spinal Tap-like in that way. And the last thing I will just say, uh, because I think we've said it all during the course of the show, is it's a fine line between stupid and clever. <laughs> it is indeed. Um, Andy, final thoughts? Um, I, I don't really have too many final thoughts because everybody kind of uh, said them. But I did want to make a couple of uh, corrections. <laughs> final thoughts, um, yes. final uh, thoughts. That, that David <laughs> Mallet actually directed the uh, Ashes to Ashes video. It was I British... thought he said David Mamet. I was so I shocked. he said two. And that's... I think he did. He was confused. <laughs> yeah. So so I heard David uh, Mamet. It's David Mallet. Uh, so, yeah. you know, um, it was actually a British guy. Um, spinal Tap Ashes actually, are for closers only. <laughs> um, spinal Tap Ashes has be closing. three real albums. Um, this is Spinal Tap, Break Like the Wind, and Back <laughs> from the Dead. I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, and then they've they got a bunch of singles, too, that they put out over the years. So, like uh, Christmas with the Devil. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> you can forget Christmas with the devil. Yes. Ah, yes. Christmas with the devil. I mean, it's no intravenous to Milo, but it works. Yeah, School <laughs> Bitch went to number 35 on the UK charts in 1992. Um, so there you go. And, and finally, that uh, that woman was on V. She was not the lead, but she was the rival of Diana, yeah, the main yeah. villain. So so she was a she was a reoccurring main character. I remember she was on V. I remember that very Yeah, soon. yeah. It was the correct age group to remember that. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I think that's everything right there. All right. <laughs> Said it all. Well, my uh, final thoughts are every movie and or every movie and every cinema is about death. Death sells. Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. Protonic reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool. I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. <laughs> It means something. It means something. And they got away. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic Riverdale. That's like a science thing, right?